and welcome to another episode of the 72 Pink Connector Podcast. For you at home, I hope that worked out because my computer's a little fucked. Um, with us this week, we have Josh. Hello. Welcome to my dumbass face. <laughs> Doc Soul and Veda. Hello. And welcome. Tom. What's up, guys? <laughs> Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I haven't been here in a little bit. Me neither. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Last month, uh, Souls Adam and I rocked this. This month, we got us four. Nice. Fuck yeah. Nice. Uh, for full disclosure, <laughs> I couldn't hear the intro music, so I was kind of bullshitting my way through when I think I need to start talking. So as far as I know, I completely botched that. Every time Irk uh-huh. right clicks, his uh, his context menu goes from like, we've got a TV here and then two other monitors over there. And it goes from the big ass TV to like these small monitors over here that we can't actually read. So we're like, I think this is flip horizontal. And then he'd click it and it was flip horizontal. It's kind of magic. Yeah, I was afraid of if I click, oh, I think this is listen to monitor. All of a sudden, all audio is lost for the entire cast. Yeah. And I have no idea. And people just see us moving our mouths. Nice. So now we look right. like now it looks like me and uh, we kind of look like we're in a Megazord, and me and uh, Dark Soul are the arms. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> You're right. We're trying yeah. out for the new Power Rangers. No, robotic power alchemy. Power? It's a robotic alchemy drive. We got to stay video game themed. Yeah, <laughs> they should make a sequel of that game. I'll say that every single podcast if I have to. I'm okay with this. <laughs> I'm not familiar with it. Oh, it's robotic great. alchemy drive is the greatest mech warrior game there ever was yeah um armored core it's, four it's, answer sir no you're wrong it's okay oh. to be wrong <laughs> if you've played you'd agree i'm, I'm with a, josh on this a, one it's a fifth person robot fighting game oh, no. oh uh yeah you're absolutely oh, wrong. it's that you were talking about yeah. fuck no man <laughs> yeah armored yeah core it's amazing four answer it is great armored awesome. armored core four is all great yeah that's a fun game but no not won't four leave it not smart. four Okay, well, either way, answer. answer, it's a great game, and it's probably probably way better, like, of an actual game, but you'll be smiling way more in Rad. I'm telling you that right now. Okay, that, that I wouldn't disagree with at all. So, you know, now we can get into the conversation about what makes a game great. Being good. <laughs> no, huh? Nah, I don't but, think so. Anyway, <laughs> what you guys been up to? Just subscribing to our podcast with Twitch Prime. Oh, nice. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. You guys do that? Prime. Yeah. You should uh, explain to, explain to our fine audience how that. No, if no. you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to one channel per month for free. Thank you, Tom, for that update. No, um, but yeah, um, it's been a busy ass fucking month. Most of the time, summers for me are super chill. This was not a chill month. Nah. Shit's been nah. real, man. Shit's been real, real. We've had um, parents come Not out play, and play. visit and unable to play during a Monster Hunter grind. Then I got left <laughs> way behind because of. I don't think you're left behind. Oh, no, I am. I was, I was right there with Souls. And then I took a week off. I come back. Oh, you know, set of bitches. You, nah, you can't keep up with Souls, that's man. Not, that's not realistic. You should never, ever, like, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to keep up with Dark Souls through a game that he's going to play exclusively. Yeah, no. Exactly. You, you, were, you lost that from the start. You're only lucky because maybe you had to use the bathroom. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah like I started that, school. So. Not, yeah. not only does Dark Soul Invader like stick to a game and play it through like exclusively to high rank, but he does so in a speed running fashion. So even if you were to dedicate the same amount of time, <laughs> yeah. he would still beat you. I mean, to be yeah. fair, when I did through it's on the true. Xbox, I went super quick to where I was. I mean, I could have stuck with him. I could have stuck with him. That's adorable um, that you think that. I don't <laughs> think you understand <laughs> how I can play a game too. <laughs> I trust no that you're good at games, but I've watched you play that. a lot of games. I've watched Dark Souls play a lot of games, and I appreciate you for who you are. Believe me. <laughs> no, I'm saying I can put the fucking time in. So I'm not so saying I you know, can't put the time in. I, I know that uh, that Dark Souls Invader is good at video games, but is he beating Mario 64 with the N64 mouse good? That's what I want to know. Okay, no, he had a mouse? Yeah, He's, yeah uh, N64 actually did have a mouse. <laughs> and and by I the way, don't. somebody just did that recently. They completed Mario 64 with only using the mouse. 
Who I mean, that's nothing compared to the Dark Souls with bananas or some shit. Oh, the, the Congos, <laughs> the Donkey Kong Congos. That was nuts. <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. So, I mean, like, Dark Souls, are you good enough to beat that with a pair of rocks, the scissors, and some twine? <laughs> Dude, no, don't give him the twine. Do not the give him the twine. <laughs> twine is OP, man, and you know it. Anybody right. can beat a game with twine. <laughs> Why? Uh, your your embarrassment if you can't beat it with whatever you have on your desk. <laughs> so I have a Man. bottle opener, a cap, and a mouse. And I you got, got a keyboard. I have a, you got a keyboard. <laughs> I have a PlayStation Four controller, so I'm going to roll with that. If that's I've, cool got, a lap, I've <laughs> got a laptop and some chai tea. Dude, throw Do that chai tea, tea at that shit. No balls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, chai is op. Chai is switching to Earl Grey. <laughs> so not, nothing interesting at all. None of, none of you guys had anything. I I play Monster Hunter. That was it. Yeah. So well, I, 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 actually, I, I, I have to launch. ask you. I have to ask you this right now. Yeah. So six seven months ago we had this conversation yep. because I had it on the Xbox, um, and you said about how awful the story is. This is a terrible story. Why yep. would anyone play this game? Blah 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 blah. Fast forward a half a year, you bought the fucking sixty dollars Steam yeah. version. Yeah, I did. And you know what? I I will totally admit you are right. Monster Hunter is not a game you go into the, for the story. It is literally there to play, uh, you know, fashion gear unlocks. That's that's the whole game. And as soon as I embrace that, I'm not playing an RPG. I'm playing just a grindy game with friends to to you know be more fashionable than them. I could get into it. So once that's you stop right. being artsy fartsy, you can enjoy it. Like I I need to to level set. I thought I thought Monster Hunter was an RPG world. It's not. It's just it's not an RPG, right? It's got some RPG stuff laid into it, but it's it's not a role playing game. It doesn't have a story. Nobody fucking cares. Like first fleet, fifth fleet, whatever. Who the fuck cares? Like hey, some, you five. Yeah, somebody like showed <laughs> up from the first fleet, and the game acted like, oh, you should know who this person is. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Can I skip this cutscene yet? Um, oh. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think everyone in this this uh, show right now is experiencing this and hates this. I didn't notice it till on the Steam. You can't skip cutscenes. Yeah. At all. Yep. It is. It is painful. So so that said, like this is not a game I am ever going to play alone. I will only ever play this game if I see other people playing this game. It's so much fun with friends, but I could not do the grind alone. There's is, no way. It is fun with friends. Mm. I can I I can do some grind alone. However, someone in here can do hella grind alone. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, Josh? Hey, I mean, like... <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> so Souls, how much time do you have in game? In game, my hours on character are probably like one one ninety five hours. Jesus. But like Pretty good. At, at least two of those hours are just AFK in lobby. Two. At least two yeah. hours. <laughs> two whole two. hours. Yeah, that that's skewed by two. Okay, so ninety-eight hours. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> math, but you'll get there. <laughs> so um, I'm at like thirty-six. I don't know what I'm at. Yeah, I, I can actually no check idea. that. As soon as you sign in, you can't check from here unless you I, I guess you could technically I, check I could your just, Steam. Yeah, I could just look at Steam. But okay, so round the room. Um, let's start with, okay, Tom's kind of already given his. Josh, you come into this knowing what Monster Hunter is. 25. Enjoying yeah. Monster Hunters. What do you think of it? Oh, I think it's my personal favorite. I really? think, uh, I think they took a lot of what was great on the few that I played. I, again, I'm not like a avid Monster Hunter, uh, fan. Like I'm not playing every single one, like some people, yeah. uh, that I do know, but this, of the ones I played, I enjoy this one more. It's more entertaining. It's a lot more fast paced. It feels almost uh, the monsters are more interesting. Animations are stellar. It's it's a really good monster hunter. And the fact that you don't have to load in between each uh, each area <laughs> is very nice. Yes, yes. He calls out something that um, for... see, this is my first. I don't know. Yeah. So the other the other two don't understand this. When you used to switch between zones, you would load. Yeah, so you know that little that little pathway that connects each oh, open wait, area. Every single one of those. Yeah, they'd all Ooh. load. Those were hard zones. But keep but keep in mind that's all right because of what you were playing on. You weren't playing on, you know, you weren't playing on your PC or even a PS4 at the time. You, like I was playing on a PSP or a PS2 or something like that. Like yeah, I, so that's I just how they're that. designed, and it makes sense, <clears throat> especially because what you were fighting and the all the effects that went into it. Like it made sense. 
But um, I, so I heard that like the monsters would take shortcuts to like further zones than before, and then you have to load multiple times to even get back to it. Oh, oh yeah, and there was no like little scout flies. You didn't have those scout flies. Those oh, you are really know where it was going. Yeah. yeah, you just have to learn where it typically likes to go, and you actually uh, like had to deal with it. So it's a little harder. Yeah, you but would have not to... not like beneficially harder. Like harder. It's like harder in the way you're like, oh, okay. You just have to be better at this, and it takes longer to be better. Yeah, and it's the, not yeah. nearly as fun. <laughs> the entry barrier was huge because yeah, the scout flies show you when what you would have to do in other monster hunters, you would have to craft something called like a paintball, and you would yeah, shoot right. the monster with it, and that's the only way you could track it, and it would wear off. So if it went oh, to a far man. enough away zone and you couldn't catch up in time. You have to essentially start from fucking scratch and find this dude again. So it, it what does like... bum me out though is they don't have the um, like the traps. I, I maybe I, I haven't seen it, but I've only seen an electric trap. I haven't seen that cool pit trap. They're There's, there. They're there. Is in the game. They okay, the pit they, trap does exist. They don't yeah. give them to you. You have to craft them yourself. Okay, with like because I, I couldn't. If you, yeah, I've only seen people uh, use the electric trap, but the the pit trap was always really cool. I always thought that was a uh, that was a cool one. Yeah, I, I one prefer the trap, pit. isn't there? There's the pit. Is that it? There's the shock. What's the? Do you use? There's there's, there's like a trap a sleep you can make trap? with spider web. Oh, like get some stuck like Spider Man. That sounds amazing. New Spider Man get Spider-Man. incoming. Yeah. Spider Man. I remember. Um, Without having played any of the previous Monster Hunters, I can already see some great quality of life improvements that the the devs were you know, with it enough and they understood enough about their player base to throw in. Like, the the fucking quest board. Like, you can either talk to the girl upstairs, there's a quest board on basically every level. Like, to get to where you need to go, the game doesn't make it stupid arbitrarily long. Like, they could have had just the quest, or, you know, quest just being given out by your handler, um, or, uh, you know, being able to eat canteen food at just the starting area. But if you forget and you get into a mission, you can just go to your tent and there's, like, some seats and you can eat there. Like, there's multiple places to get stuff done, so it never feels like, oh, I'm slogging between areas just because I'm slogging between areas. They they reserve the yeah. grind just for the hunts, which I find fantastic. Uh, also, I hope we start, I, when they say I hope 60... We start, oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. When they say 60... When they say 60 minutes for a time limit and I go into the battle like... <laughs> 60 minutes to, to hunt a guy yeah whatever <laughs> and then you get to 58 minutes and you're fucking sweating you're, you're holding your controller like it's it's the fucking log you're holding it's on to for dear never. life you're like oh my god i have to kill this i have two more minutes i'm going to waste an hour of my life like monster hunter doesn't fuck Ooh, around yeah. so i will say this in world i haven't had that issue as much but in the Same, past man. games that timer was legit because you lost track of that monster you're sweating balls saying where the fuck is it yeah yeah, the, uh, yeah, absolutely. The one thing that, like, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it's kind of like Dark Souls in a way. Like, I feel like uh, I was, I was hoping Hunter, we could work this in some way. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> and and it, it, it does actually have a real reason because it's what it is. Is it's like the first one you play is always going to be the hardest one because it's a different kind of experience, right? Monster Hunter doesn't exist in any other forms. Really, there's nothing really like it. Right. Um, it is so a you very have unique game, and in a very Japanese game in different ways. But yes. um, to circle back on what we were talking about a second ago, where you were saying like, yeah, they can, they they really do know their target audience, and they've been a, they've been around forever. There's a thousand different Monster Hunter games, and it's cool they finally nailed one that's going to get like uh, more uh, like commercial recognition. I think a lot of games could do the same, and I think maybe I'm hoping this will be the start of a new trend. Uh, like for games like Armored Core, for games like uh, you know, it would be really nice to see something along these lines. Is something like uh, what? What the hell? Uh, I had it in my brain, and now it's gone. Um, what? Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty see, Warriors, I mean, Armor and Armored Core, and Monster Hunter. I always put in so... the same basket because they're all. They basically just know their target audience. They don't divert, and they've always been the exact same, pretty much. Yeah, it's almost I, like a Madden of RPGs. <laughs> I kind of diverge them a little because I think Armored Core could be complex. Monster Hunter was always known for being incredibly obtuse. Where, no, like I my, still, what, fe- yeah. I still feel what like I, if I was to hand Tom Generations, say go home and play it, 
that he would be utterly lost at first because yeah, it's probably just such a different experience. Oh, also a nice quality That's of life thing kinda, that they. Whoop, I am not. Oh yeah, that was just kind of my place. point on that. Um, is that they are their own thing. They don't really change that much. They don't. They're just like yeah, that there's a true. group of people that like them. They've never changed. They've never diverted from what they were. Like they're not like. Uh, I mean, you could even argue that Assassin's Creed does the same thing. They they know their target audience. They don't make a game for anyone but them, right? When you have things yeah. like uh, uh, Resident Evil that go in and they're like, oh, okay, well, you know, we haven't seen a lot of traffic on the last one, so let's do four, and we're gonna do it totally different, and we're gonna see if we can do something else. But like even with Monster Hunter world it's still the same thing so it's still the same thing as the I, other ones it's just i think this is kind of an arbitrary distinction though because we we criticize games like madden like call of duty like assassin's creed for mm -hmm. for not huh or do we or do you people gamers so in general like like gamers mm -hmm. in general will criticize call of duty for putting out the same goddamn game every year and for madden for putting out the same goddamn game every mm -hmm. year but when monster hunter or dynasty warriors do it it's okay like i i get that yeah. it's something to be respected for knowing your your audience but that said isn't it lazy like i wouldn't ever say that monster hunter world is lazy because they they made some huge changes uh but isn't it lazy for dynasty warriors to literally just put on a zelda skin and call it done yeah, absolutely. I mean, to a degree, yeah. But I mean, they add little elements here and there. They try out new things here and there. I think it's the it's the obvious route to where we're at with games now, where uh, where we're we're seeing games done as a service. Those are the first games that that are that we're heading that way, right? So you have a you know you have a Madden or you have a, a Monster Hunter, and we're gonna put one out every you know every game season, right? We're going to put one out every single game season. We're going to make small changes and see how everyone likes it. We're going to iterate and keep going and keep going. And keep going. Really, at some point, you're just going to have all the games one game, and then they're just going to iterate on that game. I wish yes. they would already do that, because the tech has been here for a decade now, for Madden to just say, hey, we're putting out a game, and we're calling it Madden Football, and that's it. You will pay $60 a year for updated rosters and some patches. Well, that's what you're doing. I mean, honestly, they, yeah, they I really... Don't, I, don't want another exactly disc. I don't want another game. Like, why Why don't they just put out a base platform? Because we're, not, we're not there yet. We're, we're on the... I think that that's where we're headed. I think that's where you're going to see a lot more of these these games like that being sold as a service know. you're, you're close here's the issue is a lot of the madden players okay i shouldn't say it i may alienate people some madden players are hardcore gamers who do other stuff but you right. also get some madden gamers who just like sports and that is the only video game they play is madden yeah they are not used to the idea of i'm buying this madden and i have to pay more and more and more on top of it that that might turn them off yeah, yeah i guess i mean so. they don't, they don't live in a so. cardboard box i could say so i Either Whereas, way, I mean, I think it might be a direction that the industry could head. You're seeing it a lot more with, uh, you know, like games like Dota, League of Legends, Rocket League all coming out. Yeah. And they're just they're just going to exist as they are like Counter-Strike did. They're going to follow in what Counter-Strike does and they're just going to keep doing that. Well, like, you, oh, this game can exist for 10 years and just get random updates like it, and it doesn't have to be an MMO. Yeah. You brought up a really good title, actually, too. The MOBA space, Dota and League of Legends. That is the game style is of game that could really value from what World did. Because to me, World didn't change the equation. They made it easier for people to understand the equation. I completely agree. And LOL and fucking Dota are oh awful. Oh my god, Dota has the so worst awful. onboarding. Now, it's gotten slightly better. And the, very, very slightly. The nature of the game makes it hard to exactly. get Exactly. Like you, you cannot introduce someone to Dota and say, hey, you want to jump on and play Dota? Like, Irk and Adam could say, hey, you want to jump on and play some Siege? And I'm like, sure. Like, I know nothing about Siege, but I know I can point and shoot at a guy, and sometimes they fall over dead, and then I get shot and I die, and that like that those are the basic core mechanics right but in dota well i don't know if you go over here and you stack these camps and then you push the creep wave but don't push it too much and you got to turn off your auto attack which is on by default but make sure to stay out of the tower range and lead your creeps there so they can tank the tower um, while you take the hero make sure to put these wards in these spots but don't use I'll the eyeballs because those are obvious oh, like yeah okay so don't don't take it gets bad don't, <laughs> Don't take everything that you know about games for granted, though, because the thing is, is you, you do say that, like, you know, shooters are, you know, shooters are easy because you just point and shoot and you kill people. Like, the thing is, is, like, I played recently with someone that's never played a shooter before, yep. and they were, like, they were struggling because they've never played shooters. They've only played other games. And they were struggling with all of the core concepts of the game. It's just as complicated in some respects. 
it's just that we take a lot of that stuff for granted because that's just that's who true. we are right that's like, absolutely true. In, in like you know in in like 10 years any like game that is a little more you know different than other games are going to be a lot more hard uh, a lot more difficult to get into i mean overwatch now versus overwatch when it was released totally different game you just can't get it you can't pick that thing up and play anymore i like you yeah, can't actually can, disagree but, with that I, like I think Overwatch can, is super easy to jump into. Oh, competitive. No, no, no. Not no, competitive. not competitive. That's more or less what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, <clears throat> most games have a really high barrier for entry as far as competitive. I can pick up Dota and turn it on and, and run around the map and, like, click on things. Of course I can. But I'm not doing anything valuable. So you have to keep well, all of those things for granted. Uh, you can't, can't even play Dota casual. Like, there's no jump into casual Dota. Like, with Overwatch, I can, I can sit any person who's played a shooter down and hit quick play, and they'd be okay, right? But in Dota, there's yeah, no such thing. I tried that. Yeah, if you played a shooter, there's still, there's still stipulations. There's still things that you have to know. So I just, like, you know, uh, to, to kind of, like, get out of this, like, uh, nebulous topic... There, uh, really, I like where it's going, uh, where uh, Monster Hunter went with everything. I really like how they it created a really nice barrier for entry, real pretty, pretty easy to get into. And I'd really like to see other platforms that are similar do the same. And it embraces experimentation. Like I, I had a sword and I upgraded it, and then I hated the thing oh, I upgraded yeah. it to, and then I could back out without losing materials. I didn't have to just say, "Hey, I want to go down this other upgrade path." And yes, there are upgrade paths that are permanent, eventually. But early on, for the level that I'm at, I can pick anything as long as I've got the materials for it. You're, back it out, go back in. You ready it's to get your mind blown? Great. Hmm. You have all the weapons to start with. I know. I know. I could pick fucking anything up. Like, back my sword out to the very basics, pick up, like, the fucking big-ass shotgun polearm thing or whatever the hell that is, oh, and then upgrade that to a crazy gun. thing. Yeah. Like, it's... There's, like, so many little tweaks that are so player-friendly, and I love it. I love being able to know that Monster Hunter, I could play it totally differently tomorrow. I could go grab some bagpipes and be a support person if I wanted to. It it really really there's, no, uh, there's no character change either. There's no skill tree. There's nothing you have to make yes. a new character yeah. with. There's nothing like that. At the very beginning of the game, your character <clears throat> is the character. At the very end of the game, the only thing that's changed is your gear. Yeah, it, and the thing same is, health, is, same stamina. That's what's so cool about it existing for so long. It's been around for so mm -hmm. long, and they know what works. They know what works for the game. They know their game really well. Like I, like I really wish that uh, some of these games that know their game really well would just take a leap. And put, uh, I, I think it's really just time and effort that went into this one. It would be really nice to see some of the other ones, you know, take that next step. Like, there's a few elements in Dynasty Warriors that I really wish they'd bring back. Like, in Dynasty Warriors, there's one that you can, uh, a thing that you could do where you could bring a guy up from a grunt all the way up to, like, a super guy. Like, mm. a super warrior, just like everybody else. Yeah, I really love, cool features. I love that kind of stuff. Like Overlord does similar, like where you follow a guy through, you can make him get better. Yeah, but like I love, I love how well they took Monster Hunter, like Monster Hunter's good things, and highlighted them, and then got rid of any sort of like, you know, things that were really just the fluff. obtuse shit. Well, it's really just like things that existed <clears throat> that they took out were really just things that were unnecessarily challenging. And I, I think that it was really nice to see like, like the gems and stuff show up really late game when a lot of games like early game, they'll throw you, they'll throw you into like a giant stat tree with a bunch of really cool modifications and all this oh, shit. And there's God, like, yeah. oh, here's, here's early game stat stuff. You don't really need it. Start by like looking cool. And then after that, you know, maybe it'll matter later. I yeah. rolled credits and still don't have access to complete manipulation of my armor. And I've rolled the fucking credits. Yep. So, awesome. so let's let's get this real quick. I shouldn't say real quick. I don't want to cut them off. Souls. You're new to Monster yeah. Hunter. You never played it. You have fucking devoured this game. <laughs> yeah. What the hell do it's you think? It's exactly my type of game. It's it's just it's matches like all of my likes. And it's just, you know, it's co-op with friends, so I gotta play. It's uh PvE with um like a grinding aspect to it so i can get to go in i get to get some stuff regardless of where i'm playing it i can always get something that i might need later um especially because there isn't a skill tree and i can switch to any weapon any armor whatever i want i always have parts that i can just throw into a new piece of gear that i want to try out um 
it's the worlds are really cool. Like uh, I think one of you had brought it up. They did a really great underwater, not underwater level. Yes. Where oh, yeah. Oh my it's god, like, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Their level design is pretty neat. Um, their monster designs are cool. One of my other like again thing that I love to do is just fight these massive creatures. Like they're Dark so Souls weird. They're all so yeah. weird. Like the fucking yeah. floofy bat thing, I think. Oh, yeah. I don't even know. Oh, the, it's the like Palu, elastic. Yeah. The bird balloon. Palu, what Palu, the fuck Palu, is yeah. that? Yep. I thought it was adorable and then it cool. bit my face off. It is cute. Oh yeah. It is. Pops awesome. up and slams the ground and this game is hardcore fighting monsters killing stuff, but my god, the palicos are fucking adorable. They really are. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You my put... tiny little cat friend muffins. And I, I keep finding yours everywhere, shithead. Yeah. <laughs> He's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> shithead. Yep. So uh if you if you didn't know, if the audience didn't know, um your friends, when you meet them in game, like each person's got their little cat character that runs around with them. You can randomly find those cats in your world offline later when you're playing so me muffins and shithead decided to take down a t-rex and it was great shithead's a little <laughs> badass he really is it's yeah. just yeah they, they Sorry, did a I great job with, uh, so it. speaking speaking of up to shit uh i played fury I, oh I bought that. wait i bought that, that game forever is so ago good no it's bad uh oh it's wait, bad wait what fear what game are you talking wait Fury, Fury with the, like, the game where it's only boss battles and it's kind of a shoot 'em up, but oh, it's got some like. So, no, it's bad. That game is so good. Well, what, what is it about? Dark I mean, Souls? Tom doesn't have doesn't have a storyline, does oh, it? Oh no, no, that's Tom not wait. that's not the. I don't care about it at all. It, the game, how it sold itself was, hey, here's a um, here's a like heavy combat a la almost Dark Souls where the game is only boss battles. Uh, it's just a boss rush game and it's got some shoot 'em up stuff and dodge 'em up stuff and looked right up my alley. It, would, it looked great. Uh, and I get in there and the controls are delayed. They are spongy. Nothing connects well. Uh, the bosses, oh, wow, when, you, when you're when you doing damage, it's not super apparent that you're doing damage or even doing the right thing. Uh, the, the game is difficult but it's not difficult in a friendly way it's difficult in a bullshit what the fuck just happened sort of way uh, and i i put it down like i didn't even beat the first guy i'm sure if i spent 10 hours in this game it, getting good at it it'd be okay but it, it's not even a challenging but fun it's just frustrating and obtuse for all the wrong reasons so you played it also dark Soul? yeah i, I played it a bunch of, i actually speed ran that game too i <laughs> Put, put time into that to learn all the bosses down i never had any issues with the delay the only button delay i ever had in that game was uh the dashing and the only reason i found out was the dashing is delayed because it you dash when you let go of the button not when you press it because there's a charge dash and if they obviously you can't charge it if they were to yeah have it dash on button press um right. No, but like all even, the other even basic attacks like something was going on it all felt sluggish were you doing in-home streaming and maybe it just no. didn't go well with it no i was playing on the couch like controller connected with what, with through a usb a... cable hmm. with yeah, what yeah, controller controller too uh, just standard 360 controller interesting it's really yeah. interesting there was a, um you guys should actually really watch it it's a it's a rocket league uh, video but it talks about latency controllers input lag and uh and that he does all like the testing for it Really, really, really good. And me and Dark Soul had a, a very quick, uh, dis I wouldn't call it a discussion. He said words, yeah. I said a word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was about, uh, it's about whether it's better to have your PlayStation 4 controller wired or wireless based on input lag. Because oh. this guy does a really good job explaining that. And I, I, should, uh, I should link that. I should actually have a name for you when I get back. But it's, uh, ro it's called Rocket Science. The only reason and I didn't think that mattered is because I was I was pretty I'm pretty sure the old play like I have an old PlayStation 4 controller like the uh, um, one of the originals and the PlayStation 4 old one doesn't switch to wired it's always wireless even when you have it plugged in it's oh, really so weird. it's just it's charging but using the wireless yeah it's signal. charging exactly okay. um, interesting yeah. ones a lot of that. things I know do Xbox that. One switches to an actual wired no delay uh, circuit whenever you plug it in. Yeah, it was really interesting. He's talk. He talks a lot about uh, input lag and then also the uh, reliability of the inputs. So there was uh, controllers that had better, uh, uh, like better input lag, as for lack of a better term, it's a little confusing way of saying it. 
but uh, have had better numbers for input lag. And then, uh, but were less reliable. So they, their range Ooh. would be like, oh, well, our input lag is two milliseconds, but it can go from two to 30. And oh, it could go back okay. and forth. It, 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 we mainly get two. So where you see- PlayStation 4 Wired gets like, I think it was, I forget what it was exactly, but it was a little higher than some of them, but it was consistent 100% of the time. So there's a lot of perceived lag that comes into that that uh, you may not you may not be noticing, and it's really really interesting uh, video. You should give it a watch. It's by uh, Rocket Science. The hardest core gamers know that you even buy custom cabling that is as short as possible. So you're sitting there like attached, literally attached to your console because the length of the cable increases the latency. It's just physics. Yeah, he's, he's not yes, wrong. But, but however, <laughs> if anyone in the world can tell a one millisecond delay, I will give them my current savings. <laughs> yeah, that's no why one he wants argues, your six dollars, Eric. No right. one wants it. You but can't even get a McDonald's meal six dollars. What's nice about what he does argue is he does argue that reliability is more important than latency. Same thing with graphics. Like if you think that your you know two hundred FPS is a good thing. But you're going you're you're going back and forth between 200 and uh, 144 or 200 and and 100. You're gonna feel like you're lagging your balls off, even though oh, you're yeah. still above yeah. 60. Yeah. So that's that's just basic stuff, and I, I'm sure all of you know about that. But the same applies for controllers. Yeah. yeah. So I. Yep. I'm really weird. I'm one of the guys where unless it's like a quarter millis or quarter second kind of delay, yeah. I tend to be okay. Like, I I'm, I'm not hardcore a, enough to for it to matter for me. Yeah, like I'm with you. Fighting games, competitive in a big tournament is about the only place I could see, uh, maybe even a thirty millisecond being a big issue. Yeah, I, I think like, some of the I things think with Dota, uh, with your recent progression in Rocket League, I think you're going to start caring and noticing. Just, I, just uh, kind of I like won't. how things. Pocket you Tom won't. doesn't care about latency. Well, because I just mean <laughs> right. like 30 milliseconds is the same thing as saying you're going to press your button 33 times in a second. Right. That's I mean, why reliability that is more important than yeah. input lag. Or do you play rhythm games? Do you know how often that comes up? No, but what I'm saying is 33 <laughs> in a second. That is nothing that you're going to notice. If you get 33 or 32, the human's not like, noticing. I, I used to play like hardcore DDR metal dance pads on a 360 on an LCD TV. I can tell you about <laughs> input lag. I lived oh it, God. man. Like it was fucking no. bad. It, and, and get... The good thing about DDR on consoles is that you can actually set those levels. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying lag's not a thing and you can't notice. I'm saying there gets to be a point of diminishing returns. Yeah, like going from 30 Obviously, milliseconds yeah. to zero is way less helpful than going from 200 to 100. Oh, yeah, 200 milliseconds you'll notice. Yeah. You, there's no doubt. I yeah. mean, that's that's fucking bad. That's a fifth of a second. Yeah. Um, so That's like 60-inch TV lag. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I've been playing Dead Cells on the Switch. I did buy it for PC. It was fun. I talked about it before. But on the Switch, it's the perfect get up and go game. I can beat like three levels. Maybe a boss on the bus in the morning. In you general, maybe. Any game I, like, that, I like the strong maybe. Yeah. yeah. How maybe consistent a boss. are you in getting to the bosses? Uh, actually really consistent in getting to the concierge. Uh, in getting to the second guy, like the clock something, some douchebag. All right, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I've gotten to him twice. Uh, but I can get to the concierge almost every time now. Uh, oh, man. So Dead Cells is a 2D... I don't want to call it like a Metroidvania, because it's, it's totally not. It's a 2D side-scrolling action game uh, where the it's levels are... It, it is a roguelite, but it's not a Metroidvania. It's, it's nowhere near a Metroidvania. Um, <clears throat> well, the fact that it's a roguelite tends to mean that it's not going to be yeah. too heavily because it'd be really weird everyone's a new run but you have to backtrack so much once you get items well you, that would be you really weird. do have certain things that you can do in the game to affect earlier areas um yeah it, it, but it's it's not a it's optional it's totally optional it's not a, a full you have to do this sort of thing to proceed um but there are multiple exits to every level uh the combat in the game is just it's so fluid it feels so goddamn good um everything in that game feels wonderful to control jumping attacking all the weapons feel different they feel heavy uh it is great you get like this cool um 
Street Fighter-esque, you know, hand cannon frost thing that'll freeze enemies in place. <laughs> really cool stuff. Uh, I, I'm Animation. loving Dead Cells. I f- totally, totally recommend this game. I think I own that. I think I bought it in a bundle with a bunch of other things or some probably. Probably. weird. It like, was no, not like a, not like a, a bundle. I just, yeah. I just, yeah. Our rest got it. it. Our friend RS got it earlier. He was talking to me about. It. He said during the early access period, there got to be a point since it's a rogue light, you actually have progressions that stick with you. And he yes. said you can actually mm-hmm. at the beginning parts you could get OP. Yeah, while oh, it was yeah. early access to where the point where well this game's no longer difficult. Right. I think the first. I mean, even now you can get pretty powerful for the first room is pretty trivial. You kind of oh, yeah. run through the first room. Yeah, the, the first the first level is always a, a breeze now, but I think that's more of I understand the mechanics better and I understand yeah. the risks that I can take. So if there's like an archer shooting at me and a guy in front of me, I know how many hits I can get in because I've got the timing internalized before I have to dodge roll out of the way of the arrow. Yeah, um, like there's there's stuff like that where I can tell I am getting better, like a room full of enemies doesn't really phase me anymore because I know good grenade placement, uh, which I mean, all the. Every single item and upgrade is a blast to use. Like, even the stupid little ones that are really weird and quirky, you can make full builds around. Uh, it's a really good time. I will say there is one area that I think is uh, an area you can't get better at because it's random, and I don't like this area. Uh, there's an area where you die based on if the room is dark or not, or if your area is dark or not. The, r- oh. the levels are random gen, and it has to put lights around you. And if the game doesn't put lights around you, you're going to die. And oh, it's random. Hmm. So, like, the game can just be like, yeah, go across the level and find a light over there, all the while fighting enemies and taking damage in the dark. And I'm just like, I'll try. <laughs> that's Damn, that's shitty. Sucks. That's a shit mechanic. I wonder yeah, if they I fixed like that in the one. real release. Is that in the full release? No, it's in, I, it was in full release. Oh, okay. I don't even think it was in Damn. beta. I don't know what they added it. Is I don't it a like bonus that. area or is it a no, full-fledged it's, normal? No, it's main campaign area. Ooh, oh, it that's painful. sucks. So one of that's the things, like a true run killer. One of the things that uh, Dead Cells does uh, is every so often an enemy you kill will drop a cell or you can get them in a couple other ways uh and you can use those to unlock permanent upgrades like hey i want to be able to use this flame sword or have it appear in runs so you would unlock the ability for this to you know proc in one of the randomly generated levels Uh, but you can do things like expand my health flask or make sure i carry over more gold when i die Uh, so even if you have a shit run you get two levels in and just get leveled out because of whatever reason you're in stupidity most likely um it that's the case for me anyway uh i never feel like i've actually lost progress because i i inched a little bit closer there's a kind of a constant grind to it i think that was to me anyway the first place i saw that was like rogue legacy really brought that yeah. forward the idea yep. of we don't need to be a pure rogue like we can actually do some permanent shit here yeah yeah they were the first roguelite game i think they they coined the term roguelite i don't think there was a different one I thought there were games that did that before, but I could be wrong. Because, ro- I mean, rogue games have been around since Rogue, and Rogue's yeah. been around since, like, the 70s. Yeah. But, I mean, it's the idea between pure random and random with some slight enhancements. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do enjoy carrying over my grind into Dead Cells. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I could never get into Isaac is because it felt like too much of a full reset. God, at the end. I love that. I, I love Isaac and I, I love the idea that I can have a trash run and the next one I could have a great run. Um, but it never feels like I'm pro- like progressing towards anything with Dead Cells. Even if I have a shit run, you know, I added five cells to something. Yeah. Did you play? Have you played uh, Enter the Gungeon? Oh yeah. yeah, I love so Enter the Gungeon. Fucking hard. Love yeah. Enter the Gungeon, and it is it, it's fucking hair pulling hard. That is brutally hard. Yeah, I think that's like Great the best fucking parts game. of. Yeah, it's really good. Dadum talked about it last time with the new patch, and I decided to re-download <clears> it and try it out a bit. I think it brings the best parts of Dead Cells, even though Dead Cells came out way after that game. Um, and uh, Isaac is the fact that it has a pretty hard reset, but there are still things you can buy from like the main hub area yeah or like carry over um stuff like that and i think it's a really good mix i think it might be it's mix makes it slightly harder in terms of a reset than um dead cells but definitely not as hard of a reset as isaac yeah 
Hard game. Hard game, though. Just brutal. overall difficult. Yeah. Brutal. Way harder than oh, yeah. Isaac and Dead Cells, like, combined. So, speaking yeah, of games... Speaking of games published by Devolver Digital, uh, I got to see their booth at PAX where they were heavily pushing a new game that they're publishing called The Messenger, uh, which is kind of like a um, a new spin on old school Ninja Gaiden, like Ninja Gaiden on the NES kind of old school. Uh, so I've been playing that over the past couple days because it came out like two days ago. It's really fucking good. It is old school as hell, uh, like to the point where if you if you go off screen and come back to that screen, the enemies have returned. Um, like old old school. Yeah, it's you've it, got to be a fan of NES games. It looks good. It's just I don't get enjoyment in playing those type of games anymore. I get it. If if you liked Shovel Knight, you will like The Messenger. I'll put it that way. Oh, yeah. You, what is it on? Uh, everything. Oops everything it's yeah i got it on the switch so i think oh, okay. it's it's 15 bucks on uh 15 percent off right now uh because of packs so i think i paid 18 bucks for it or something after that was PAX. a 20 dollar game no i think it was 15 the nintendo added tax and oh. bullshit um but it's 15 percent off right now uh so you can go pick it up i really enjoy it uh and surprisingly the writing in that game is pretty phenomenal i went in expecting nothing it's a goddamn nes game uh but it's got some fourth wall breaks uh it's it's, it's kind of funny in places yeah it's it's devolver oh, okay. i i like it i think they uh they published a good game that's cool yeah, yeah. good games are always needed especially now <laughs> Yeah, especially now. So at least summer droughts kind of ending. Now we're kind of getting into the oh into my god, the, there's yeah, so much the holiday out. season. The end of this year, yeah, yeah. 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 Rip Wallet, dude. Going to PAX yeah. destroyed me. I'm going to end up buying fucking everything. Well, you have one of the big games that people have been waiting on just coming out right around the fucking court, like in a week. The new expansion for Binding of Isaac. I know. Actually, I am pretty fucking excited about <laughs> right? that. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was but, actually wondering if that's what you were referencing. That, that's got me going. But no, no. The masses. I mean, Adam and I are the minority probably on that. But the masses are fucking stoked about Spider-Man. Yeah. And that shit's oh, about yeah. to launch. So Spider-Man was there. It was packed. Uh, Sony was there giving demos. Um it, it looks it looks really good. Spelunky Two was there, but sadly, there's a power outage in that row. I couldn't play Spelunky Two. No, no, but but it's multiplayer. I know. I'm so excited. I fucking love <laughs> Spelunky and Spelunky Two. I believe it's coming to the Switch. If I am not misremembering this, I don't know if I'll play it on Switch. I mean, it's a good Switch game. It, I'm gonna get it to in multiple places. I fucking love Spelunky. I it just, is great. I, it's a type of game, though, where I want to know that I can use the same account. I don't want to make all this I progression know. on my computer. That's the reason Pick I stopped playing Switch. Dead Cells on the PC, because I've got it on the Switch. Uh, but multiplayer is so much easier on a platform that's not as fucking stupid, stupid yeah. as Nintendo's. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about the Isaac stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, that looks good. It's based supposed, on a fan mod, right? Well, so... There was a big update. So there for a while after, um, I can't remember what it was, the big last official update. Was it after? Not, not the most recent. Yeah, after birth. They were taking on um, community mods. Like every month they would bring on some of the best stuff. So there was constantly new characters in the game, new items in the game. It was beautiful how they were letting the community support the game. And then about, what is it, four months ago, uh, McMullen's like, you know what? Here's the last patch. We're done with the game. Here is the last con contributions to the game. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, on Twitter, I think yesterday, was it? I think it was yesterday he yeah. tweeted it out, and I told you to go seek this out. Yeah. He tweeted out that, oh, I'm never actually done with Isaac. Come see us at PAX. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, they yeah. had a they had a big ass booth. They had a bunch of PCs laying out so people could play. Um, I died super quickly. Uh, my buddy who was there, he died super quickly. Uh, and from what I could tell, I found literally everything new in the game, as far as I'm concerned with Isaac. In which case, it's uh, it's that I will die quickly and and very harshly. Uh, but they did have a, a little Isaac statue, and I took a picture with it. That's kind of cute. cute. Yeah, yeah, cute. Saw that. yeah, great statue. But uh, yeah, yeah, more Isaac stuff. So that's cool. I love that that Edmund is is still doing Isaac stuff. That okay. So everyone first. I mean, he busted onto the scene with Super Meat Boy. Yeah, he did. But I think Isaac is his first or his. This is my baby. Yeah, because 
It's uh, got him written all over it. There's a game called the or a game on Steam called The Basement Collection, which was a lot of his earlier works. And after playing that, after going through Isaac, mm-hmm. you get this realization of holy shit. He put a lot of his previous games yep. things into Isaac. Yeah. Isaac is the culmination of this man. Um uh, speaking of Meat Boy, I saw Super Meat Boy Forever. They were there. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, looks really good. Uh, they The art style has changed a bit, if you've seen any, any other trailers. Uh, it's a little bit more fluid than it was before. Looks great. Looks hard as fucking hell. It's, I mean, it's Meat Boy. It's Meat Boy. Uh, and it will mm-hmm. be on the Switch. Well, that, that, that makes sense. If, yeah. it's, if it's a Switch. I'm, I'm going to pick it up on the Switch, and I'm going to hate everything after I throw my Switch out of the window of a moving bus. Yeah, that's going to be rough. I just yeah. imagine you on the yeah. bus, like, trying to beat a level, just raging in your seat. Yep. No, no, he's about to beat the level. They hit a speed bump, and it throws oh his thumb God. into the stick. That shit has happened in Dead Cells, where, where the bus, like, hit a bump or something, and I fucking died because of it. Like, it's oh, goddamn no. bullshit. Um, oh, no. Yeah, but... But that'll be fun. I saw a bunch of shit at PAX, but I don't want to. I don't want to take up everyone's time. Uh, what have the, you guys been playing? There's one thing I wanted to bring up. <clears throat> oh, so um, for was it Tom's birthday? Oh yeah, uh, we went out to Dave and Buster's, and at E3 there was uh, Microsoft had <clears throat> two big announcements on the Halo front. Um, essentially, Halo Six was announced, and they also announced that they were going to be doing a Halo light gun game for arcades. Like on games, for those not in the know, is more of like you point the gun at the screen and you shoot (laughs) shit. Yeah. So uh, we show up to Dave and Buster's and like my jaw dropped because I'm a huge Halo fanboy. My jaw dropped because I walk in and I see, holy shit, it's here. So uh, we go over and do this. It's a big old sit down four person wide two. It looks rad as fuck. Like two 80 inch screens in a series. Yeah. And you sit down, everyone has a Gatling gun in front of them. And you're just shooting all this Covenant shit that's constantly coming at you, getting grenades and random stuff. It is Halo fan service written all over oh, it. Oh, yeah. But it's good. It's it not. It plays it's really bad. well. No, it's bad. You. No, it's not. It is. So the, the reason it's bad is because it's got the uh, arcade <laughs> issue with every arcade light gun game that there is. The, the thing is completely unfair, but not like, oh, look, all these guys are going to randomly kill you. Like, okay, fine, whatever. It's a quarter muncher. That it, It's supposed to. But... We literally sat at a point when like okay, either so, part, somebody part. walked away from the game and we were waiting to play and we we sat down in the seats so we could, you know, reserve our spot and we were waiting for them to die so we could carry on with our own new game. And this Covenant Elite was just blasting the guy and his life bar is just like tick down like maybe maybe a pixel every couple seconds. And it fucking took forever, and we couldn't actually get the guy to die until we forced him to get to a part where he got shot once, and his health bar just, like, depleted all the way. So there are actual kill uh, planes that you will hit in this game, and that happened all the fucking time. I, we would never die until we all got to one spot, and then it would kill, like, two of us randomly. Well, I, I don't think it was random. I was watching my health that was going down. I think what happened with that guy is there's a catch-up me- mechanism oh similar to that of God. Mario Kart where they realize someone does really, really bad. Let's not fucking punish them as hard. But it, it's so blatant. Like, I, I'm a fan of catch-up mechanics in many games, but this felt, like, really poor because we were wrecking shit, and then all of a sudden one of us would just explode. I've been... It I, was bad. I watched the hell. Yeah, there all, wasn't all a sudden have jump. That. It, but it, not all arcades have that. Like, Time Crisis has got, like, the one or two guys, like, during a level that will instant kill you, and, and you know that those are the one or two guys you can be careful around and work around them, but this was seemingly arbitrary. Time Crisis is an exception because Time Crisis gives you a mechanism to save yourself. <sighs> Most games don't give you that. That's, that's true. That's a good point. I just, I did <clears throat> not like the way this game pulled it off. It felt really arbitrary and I, I don't want to say they're, they're gaming people out of their money, but they're gaming people out of their money. And it's not like this is a ticket spitter. Like, this is a game that you play to have the experience. Give me something rational. Give me something where, yeah, it's going to get fucking hard at parts and you're going to die. But let me fucking die if I suck at the game. Go you're not play. supposed to finish those games. Like, they don't they don't put them out because they expect you to finish them. They expect I don't know. You to go Unless and you're Tom and I and you bit. have 20 extra bucks on your card yeah, and you like, go through Star we, Wars. Yeah, we finished Star Wars. 
we finished Jurassic Park. Like, but that's there, it. Like, those there are, the are ones, games like, that you can finish, and and I feel like this was money, poorly yeah. made. Yeah, that was the thing. We we put some money into Star Wars one. That one yeah. was not. The thing is, is like life. just. I mean, just be just be realistic. When you go into an arcade, be realistic with yourself. You're not like you're going in. You're gonna play a couple games. You're gonna die in a really BS way. Yeah. No, it's I'm I'm totally always. okay with that. But like, don't let me keep living. Like, if the, if the Covenant guy is like plugging me away, fucking kill me, please, for the love of God. Or at least let me drop a grenade at my feet. I don't need to sit and wait for the the fucking pixels on the health bar to drain one pixel at a time over thirty minutes. Because uh, if we didn't proceed, we probably would have been there for ten minutes waiting to die. It, it would have took. I a while. mean, that was stupid. That, I, that's, I think uh, that's bullshit. But. Well, we'll get off the, the, yeah. that. that uh, also, well, <laughs> speaking of birthday, uh, Irk got me Happy Beat Saber. Day. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it's so, so good. It really is. Souls, so, do you have a fucking vibe yet? No, I just watch people play. Dude, you gotta game. get a vibe. It's so fucking good. <laughs> that Nadio Shield have you written all fucking over. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> if people didn't know, I have a not so secret love of rhythm and music games like fucking love them like have cds of bomani soundtracks fucking love them um so beat saber is a vr rhythm music game where you can use lightsabers to hit things in certain directions because the blocks flying at you have arrows on them um and what's cool is the modding community got a hold of this because beat saber has like five songs yeah um and they're okay uh, but the modding community allows you to go to a website called beatsaver.com uh, and download whatever in the game. Like they have an in-game modded interface to allow you to search for shit and download it. Like, you know, just about anything by Queen. They've got some Bowie in there. They have Let It Go from Frozen. So, of course, I've been playing that. By the way, that song kicks my ass every fucking time. I beat it once. You should. Once. You should probably let it go. No, I will never let it go. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome from Moana's in there. That's that's pretty good. Uh, oh, that they've song is that whole that whole movie's music is just awesome. It really is, um, but it's so much fun. It's so I I've been actually using it as my workout routine, where I will spend at least two hours in Beat Saber, just flailing myself all over the place, especially to September by Earth, Wind, and Fire, and it is so good. Um, the only downside to the community made stuff is some of it is like super top notch. You would see this in like professionally made music games. It's it all the steps are perfect. Uh, and then there's stuff where you you download a song. It's like okay, so they put in the first thirty seconds of steps and they never finished it. So you're standing there in a dark room with no arrows flying at you. No, the worst is when they had it close to the right rhythm, but oh, didn't care yeah. enough to get it on beat. Yeah, there's that too. Those suck. But <clears throat> Souls does a lot of Osu, so he knows what it's like dealing with uh, player-made charts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it's pretty nice that you can have it modded so you can download them in-game. Oh, yes. That's any rhythm beautiful. Game I play. Yeah, any rhythm game I've played is always like, go find a forum somewhere where people put up charts that they make and hope that it's a working chart. And <laughs> so. drop it in this folder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Beat Saber and the Beat Saber mod make it super easy because you're you're in VR. You don't want to take off the headset to go click around shit. Oh, like, yeah. You can even delete songs in the in-game interface. So when I played a shitty song, I just click delete, yes, and it's done. Um, so I, the modding community is top-notch for this game. It's really great. Uh, Beat Saber... Totally recommend it. It is fantastic. How much is that game? I don't know. I didn't buy it. Twenty? Did I say what is question the mark? Uh, it's so are Vive still the same price? Have they uh, Vi down? the Vive one is actually cheaper. Uh, and really, you don't need a Vive Pro. Uh, it does have a little bit of expanded resolution, but it's mostly for reading. Um, well, there's there's one big thing. Hmm. The embedded headphones. The Vive Two or the whole next gens having the wireless yeah they they will that's huge i'm i'm waiting for the full next gen release like hey we're doubling the resolution because right now it's just a small bump um the the real reason the vive pro came out is so uh vr arcades could more easily do the 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 setup for people because right now with the vive one you put it on you've got three straps you've got a bunch of cables and shit around you it, it's actually really annoying to get set up once um but after you set it up once for yourself it works fine as long as you're the only person wearing the headset for the new vive you just 
kind of sort of place the headset on a person in sort of, in some sort of way and then you twist a big knob in the back and it tightens the whole thing around them so it's super fast to get on and off it's more like a construction helmet fit yeah uh okay. and it's it's great for vr arcades who don't want to have personnel you know spending 20 minutes out of every session refitting someone um so yeah i i think you can get a vive one you can get everything with it for pretty cheap save yourself some dough also, save your graphics card because the, the Vive Pro does have more pixels uh, and it will drive your system harder. Yeah, right. Souls is safe for it because Souls got a solid card, but you just need to get it because the, v the rhythm games in VR are nutty. Yeah, they are so much fun. I never thought I'd get beyond like DDR or, or like Elite Beat Agents level of, oh my God, I love this. It's the best thing ever. But Beat Saber? Elite Beat yeah. Agents is so good. Yeah. Oh my God, I need another Elite Beat Agents. Never heard uh, of that game. It's uh, Osu. So it, it, Osu literally copied Elite Beat Agents. That's the entire Wait, interface. Uh, every Osu has like four different versions. Is, is, is it the one where you like... Tracy? Uh, the core one, the Tracy one that you, okay, you okay. usually yeah. use. Elite Wait, Beat Agents is, a is a thing. No, it's uh, a... Um, DS. It's a DS, yeah. Oh, okay, OG okay. DS. That makes... Yeah, like I, with I played Mama. way back in the day. Cooking Mama was a shit too. Anyway, we can, I digress. Yes, <laughs> Cooking Mama. Play, uh, oh, actually, that reminds me real quick. I have to do the shout out because I don't. I think this went under the radar for the most part. No one realized it. Overcooked Two is out, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, with they, online yeah. multiplayer. They had that at PAX. I don't know why yeah. games that already out are at PAX. Games like that, I typically wait. I we do game night, so we're gonna do that on the next game. The next game night that we do. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited. I loved the first one, and I've heard a lot of people complain. It's just like the first one with new levels. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. And it has multiplayer now. And you can throw stuff. Yes, that is actually a new mechanic I heard about. That's pretty cool. And it, I can't wait oh, to make mechanic. my friend break another controller of mine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You should make him pay uh -huh. a deposit to play. If you dash, if you dash at your friends, by the way, you just like totally fuck them up. But then they get mad and break your controller. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> that game is so fun. Yeah, it's game. a lose lose for sure. But I laugh, so lose lose win. Maybe I don't know. I don't think that's how math works. <laughs> nah, yeah, it, it works. Is. Okay, checks out. Cool. Totally. So uh, I did see a whole bunch of shit at PAX. If if you guys wanna wanna dive into that, but I don't wanna again. I don't wanna steal it. Let's do it. I only right. played Monster Hunter for the past month, so like I, we know. I've been on a we totally know. different grind <laughs> with uh, a totally okay. different set of stuff and a totally different reward system. Yeah, that's absolutely true. All right, but we'll leave it at that for now. All right, Unless, so there okay. it is. That's it. Anyway, well, see so, you guys next week, <laughs> next month at uh, uh, at PAX. Go ahead. No, no. <laughs> at PAX. Are you going into uh, PAX or are we doing Yeah, yeah, no, he, he was getting, uh, he's getting right. visual aids for yeah, those watching. Yeah. So I, I saw Shift Quantum, which is like uh, uh -oh. a flash game that they're making into a real thing. I don't it, it looked okay, I guess. Um there's a company out there making actual NES cartridges out of their games. Like their game is literally an NES game. It's five bucks on Steam. Uh they're developing full quiet. Uh and this is by uh, Retrotainment Games. You can find them at RetrotainmentGames.com. Uh, they're also now they're on the Xbox new, One. They're like, making new NES Literally, games. they had NES cartridges for 50 bucks. You can pay 60 bucks and get an actual box, like made in the 80s sort of box for your NES cartridge with a brand new game on it. They developed a custom homemade NES game engine that compiles down to NES assembly code really cool stuff really cool guys they even build in speed running mechanics because they want their games to be speed run um it's really fun and their games are actually pretty good they had a a bunch of like actual nes hardware uh with real controllers set up outside their booth um pretty cool stuff um i got to see basically an entire game based around rainbow road on the super nintendo where you could actually fall off of rainbow road you know, that whole bullshit mechanic. Uh, yeah, they're making Marble Madness mixed with that. It's called Super Impossible Road. Winning is cheating. Uh, and yeah, they're at superimpossibleroad.com. That was, that was okay. Still really rough around the edges. Um, I saw Unnamed Goose Game or Untitled Goose Game. Uh, have you guys seen this? Have you seen this trailer? No. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I have. I remember right. this one. Yeah. 
So they're going to release in 2019. Uh, they had a big ass booth with a fake ass picnic there. Um, and I was giggling like a goddamn schoolgirl at their booth because the game is so hilarious. You it's are, just birds or dick simulator too. Yes. You are just a fucking asshole goose and you do asshole goose things to everyone. This guy was literally, he, he you know, had a limited amount of time to play the game. So he spent the whole game or the whole session running around honking at people just wah, 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 and annoying the piss out of them because he was an asshole goose. That game looks fun. He was having the time of his life and it'll be on the Switch. So I'm totally picking that up. Um, Let's see. Oh, is Correct it? me I if I'm wrong. Play. It looks like it's multiplayer, right? Uh, they did tease that. I don't know if it's actually multiplayer. Though. At the very end of the trailer, there was two geese honking at one dude. Yeah. So I assume multiplayer on I the horizon. Really I hope, hope it's so. multiplayer. There's just not enough Switch games that I really want to play on Switch. Really? And I find the exact like opposite problem. I think there are too many games on the, on the Switch that I want to play. They're all like mobile games. That's what it feels like. A lot uh, of no, them no, feel like them, mobile games. Most of them are indie games on Steam that are like five bucks on Steam, but ten bucks on the Switch. Give me a list of games that are exclusive to the Switch that I wouldn't rather play on PC. That's more than five. Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Mario That's Kart. not a Nintendo game. <laughs> oh, okay. then oh, never mind. Well, there's then, nothing. Then, then yeah, you're... there's nothing. Well, so okay, the... so here's the here's the difference. You take a bus. Yeah. Josh, do you drive? Yeah. There yeah, see, that's that's the difference. difference. I have I have at least an hour and a half every single day going to and from work where I can sit down and play a game on my Switch. Yeah, we went we went looking. Did you notice a, a, a new a new bunch of games that are on the Switch? I don't know if you noticed them, but yes. they have an, a little a little woman on there, and there's a variety of them. They're like companion sims oh, oh i did God. see this I there's did like a see shitload this. of them yeah did you read read all the descriptions for it yes i did and it was the most painful it's english i've broken, read yeah, yeah it's super broken english and it's just like oh. it's amazing i, I should i should I get should one of these and, i should get one of these to uh to play it on the switch i'm surprised nintendo allowed it on yeah me too it is fucking creepy man because, okay, for those who aren't aware of how the Switch Marketplace works, it is incredibly oh, locked down by yeah. Nintendo, and it's only delish. what they allow is there. This is not a Steam oh, kind of thing. It's where not you can put Steam, what you it's want. not Google Play, it's not the Apple App Store. It is Nintendo literally has people sitting there and approving your game and your idea and working with you to launch the thing. And they're pretty strict, too. I remember yeah. there's yes. there's been a number yeah. of things that, that are... Uh, that, are, that have been just re flat out rejected. Yeah. Um, that were kind of weird, but then they have games like this. I could totally pull this up. It would take me seconds. <laughs> so uh, I... But you continue. Yeah, so Devolver had a big-ass booth there where I saw the messenger. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I bought some expensive D&D uh, &D dice, like D20, D10, stuff like that. Uh, they're fully metal. They're really pretty. Um, but they also had super, like, over $200 sets of dice. Uh, because they're either carved out of wood or made out of precious gemstone material. Oh Fucking nuts. God. Like, I went up to this place at PAX that looks like a goddamn jewelry store display case. It's like, what the fuck is it? So I walk up. It's fucking D20s and shit in this display case made out of precious gemstones. What the fuck? Okay, let's be honest, though. I mean, if, you're playing, D &D, if you're playing D&D every weekend... I yeah. could see, I could see. I mean, it sounds silly, but if you're no, literally playing it. the entire your entire years every weekend, yeah, dropping two hundred dollars on a set of D twenty, you're going to use the rest of your life. Yeah. That's not absurd. So, okay, have you seen dice towers? They're literally wooden towers or plastic towers where you drop your dice in the top oh. and they hit a bunch of stuff and they come out the bottom into a tray. It's to roll it. Yeah, it rolls yeah. your dice for you. Uh, so, a couple couple of buddies of mine uh, took home like two hundred two hundred and fifty dollar dice towers. That were made out of rare wood and stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking what people like because these people love playing, you know, games. Uh, but it's it's insane to me that not only are people buying the stuff a lot, but they're buying it enough that showing up at PAX and renting an expensive ass booth to sell these things turns a profit. Tom. PAX is the type of audience they're looking for. Yeah, I know. It's still insane. We're fucking nerds. Oh, yeah, there they we go. Love so, us. Okay, Dobby, Dobby just posted uh, Mammoth Ivory Dice, which we actually, my coworkers and I were talking about last night. Um, you can get dice carved out of Mammoth Ivory. Like, they unearthed Mammoth 
oh and carved fucking D20s and shit out of it. $2,176 for a set. Okay, for what that is, well, that is too cheap. That yeah, is probably. too cheap for what that is. Probably. If that is legitimately mammoth dice, that like, needs to be more like, money. I'm opening this goddamn link right now, and let me, let me take a look at this. On the planet until and now, now you have a Trojan. They have been... Yeah. And, uh, they oh my sense. god, those are goddamn gorgeous. Holy shit. They come in a really nice wooden case, and yeah, it's really fancy. Yeah, okay, like 2000 might be a little cheap for what these are. If it's Ivy, I, Ivy, holy crap. If it's Ivy, no way in hell anyone's even paying that. But we digress. Holy what is shit. Up with the, there's Those like a glorious. range of prices. It's from 200 to 2000 You can either buy one D20 or a full set. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm the kind of guy that I couldn't handle just having a really nice D20. Yeah, I would no. need a whole set. You gotta have the whole set. Yeah, there's no other say, way. One D20. That's... Dobby, is that yeah. 2100 just for the D20? It just wouldn't match anything. If you had it and you rolled a nat one, would you put it in dice trail? <laughs> <laughs> would you throw it out at the window price? for the nat one? <laughs> at, the, at that price, would you? I mean, if you roll like consistent nat ones on that, yeah. Like, what if you buy really unlucky mammoth dice? What are you left that with? Right? <laughs> I think. I think if you do something about like you know, you take some bones and carve them up of this dead thing. I think you're cursed. I think it's much more than. I think I you're want, officially. I want dice cursed. made out of the bones of an Indian burial ground. That's what I want. I was just. I need say, super I cursed dice. Indian, Indian bone. Human bone dice. <laughs> like the entire Indian burial ground gets condensed and smashed up into one. D20? Just, oh a whole D20. Yeah, you roll nothing but ones the rest of your life for yeah, doing that. On any dice. Like no matter what you do. I, I almost bought a big, like a heavy D20, but but my buddy did tell me, he said, Yeah, that's only good for throwing at people. And I kinda agreed, so I sat it down. It was like forty bucks or something for a big ass metal You'd D20. Be the dude shows up to that, rolls it, knocks everything off the fucking table. Yeah. You know what'd be sick though is if they had giant like if they had giant padded D20. <clears throat> No oh, uh, speaking of dice and dice games, oh, role playing oh, games. Throw it. Oh, that would be awesome. Sorry, Josh has a good fucking idea. Huh. I like that. A giant pad of D20, you throw at someone, and like wherever they catch it's what it rolled. Oh, that's nice. Actually, Sorry, there's, I there's a big ass uh, pillow D20 um, that I saw somewhere. I forget. One of my friends had it. Uh, it's a pillow that's a D20, and you can just roll it. It wasn't quite perfect, though, because it would never land on 20. Um, so I saw Pathfinder Kingmaker. So Pathfinder is the D&D 3.5 mod, um, the super popular role-playing game, and they've got a computer RPG coming out, Pathfinder Kingmaker, and it looks pretty decent. I, I didn't get to play it, but it had a big audience there. People are excited about it. The character creation, like not as far as looks go, but as far as stats, abilities, stuff like that, super in-depth. It's literally like they took the Pathfinder core rulebook and said, this is the shit you can do with your character. So it looks super open-ended in how you play. Mm. That's kind of cool. I always like um, advanced, well, what they always call advanced D&D &D stuff, where it's just electronic D&D. &D. Yeah. So Path... Uh, Pax was fun. Oh, I can't. Oh, um, no way. What? What you got? Though? I was about. I was about to give up. I was about. I was like, okay. Did I you can't find, find it? it. You, guys, you guys figured out. I hit the button down once as I was setting it down, and it landed on it. And <laughs> it's it's glorious. Let's let's put. Can, let's see if you can get it. Oh uh, my oh, yeah. god! Oh, what the fuck? All right, for so our, so switch, for our audio, audio it like. it's, it's actually on there. Here it is. It's okay, Josh. Dollars. Josh, explain what you're seeing for our audio listeners. All right. Well, this this is a game on on the Switch called Electric Love, <laughs> and this is and, okay. And, and, and okay, follow with me. Yes. Follow, follow with me here. I'm going to read this verbatim to the best of my ability. Um, so, like, I'm not misspeaking. A love likeness pseudo talk game, Electric Love, uh, that is topic in the smartphone. A little embarrassing in a conversation that is pounding romance. <laughs> Skill up. <laughs> skill up indeed right in the middle of, right in the middle of a fucking sentence skill up <laughs> and i'm not kidding i don't know if i can i don't know how good i can put this up can you read that i don't no, know if you guys can read no, that no, there's no. no way we can uh, read that that's never gonna happen oh uh, uh I'll, I'll i'll take a picture of it and put it on discord or something <laughs> but like uh it talks about all sorts of stuff in here um this is <laughs> That is crazy. Like here's, here's a, what is pure electric love? Re reply to questions from her. Please, please her. Sometimes a little annoying. 
Khaki please, please, is, her. Im- is important for love affair! Exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo let this fucking happen. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. There's like, there's, I think there was like five or six of them that were on, uh, that were on the, on the Switch, and they all have, and they all have different descriptions, and they're all, they're almost worth buying a Switch just to read. <laughs> real girl that wasn't even like an anime girl no no yeah, it's nah. a real it's a real girl i see i thought it was gonna be like one of the weird three no, anime. it's weirder no. <laughs> honestly for some reason that's weirder to me that maybe because it's weird. more maybe because it's normal to see like a like a random like uh dating sim thing because i've seen yeah. it since i was like in high school right so i've seen yeah. it but like every other week the top seller on steam is an anime dating sim yeah but this yeah. is like an actual like like chick and it's it's i don't know it's really weird so, <laughs> but it makes me really uncomfortable and i like it <laughs> i uh, uh, i, I don't saw... like get it right anyone scrolling can see that game yes yeah no it's just the, there the it's switch just, does there's... have um parental controls that you can enable so they can only oh, get certain rated. things in the shop yeah uh, uh i don't know i put it down let me see should be rated uh, e for everyone i think <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it because there wouldn't be anything like unless the conversation itself got raunchy. The Switch has no nudity, as far as I know. I don't think. Oh, it you does. can get a complete set for ten dollars, you guys. Oh, oh wow, oh. we should do that. Dude, also, it's pretty cheap. Anime, or they're not anime. While he's digging through that, I do want to call out the um. Where's the Switch, oh T for teen? The Switch oh, online uh, service should be paid soon. Oh yeah. Oh fuck. That, we haven't that, even done that, news. That's about to happen. Jesus. Okay. Um. So oh, hold on, hold on. I got to get back to that. Josh, you said it's only teen. It's T for teen. Yeah, it's got nothing, nothing terrible. Uh, it's T for hey. something else. Am I right? Hey. Toilet. T for humor. Yeah. Toilet. Like, like oh. she makes really shitty jokes. T yeah, for trying jokes. too hard at that joke. Uh, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying too yeah. hard. To retort. Okay. I don't so know. both, okay. both, <laughs> both fronts. Speaking <laughs> of trying too hard, uh, and it, it really kills me because talking to uh, the person at PAX responsible for showing off these games, really good guy. I don't think he's got a connection with reality or he's really bad at marketing. Um, I'm super excited about the game, but not about how to get it. Uh, it's called Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption. Imagine Dark Souls combat, but a boss rush game. Yeah, it sounds exactly like Fury. Uh, but you're fighting the seven deadly <laughs> sins. So grumpy about that concept. Yeah, I know. It, it sound, yeah. it, you're fighting the seven Fury deadly sins. Bullet hell, though. Yeah, this is not bullet hell. This is It totally looks like Dark Souls. Um when you beat a boss you get a permanent level down like you get a permanent debuff on one of the things you can do and by the end of the game you're just this super weakling so you have to skill up yourself uh in order to beat the game uh it seems really interesting uh because you you don't level up you level down as the game progresses i really like if you if you fail right otherwise you're fine no no if you beat the boss, you get a permanent debuff. And you go to the next oh. boss. Yeah. As you progress through cool. the, the circles of hell, yeah. you get weaker and weaker and still have to fight. That's kind of cool. I like yeah. that. It'd be it's cool. A, if, it's a pretty interesting idea. And the, the game itself it just, looked beautiful. It's actually really interesting because if you did the math, like if you were like, you could argue that any game does the exact same thing, especially if you made all of the enemies the exact same like rating as far as the number is concerned like every enemy is the exact same except you just take away your stats instead of giving them stats that's the same cool. shit it's just like it's just an inverse like numbering scheme when you think about it well, right? but so normally actually, you go up as well though you don't just pick up the boss you yourself right, but, get better shit right but it's kind of like easier math right yeah to go down yeah to like have you just go down leave everybody constant granted it, that's not going to be the situation but yeah it's this, just it's it just interesting it's really interesting it just doesn't give you the chance to better yourself though which is the the different spin normally or, in most of those games you at least have the illusion that you can get yourself or, better or Pick maybe it's thing. more of a mechanical thing like you actually get better at the game yes like, yeah you know, that's what that's this looks like it's gonna rely I, pref- on. I prefer games like that of all games if there's any kind of game that like i just have to rely on stats i will quit playing that game a hundred percent of the time if i have to rely on stats and like balancing buffs and numbers i will quit playing that game eventually so you don't like divinity like and that kind of stuff divinity no oh, I love like i did i style. did but i i lose interest it's not about whether or not like i like it as a game it's just i lose interest much faster if i can't like i like monster hunter because 
I actually have to get physically good at the game, like if that makes sense. Yeah, like, I get it. I have to have the ability to deal with it. I like Rocket League because I have to, like nothing changes. It's just, am I getting better? Well, hold on, hold on. You haven't been leveling up your car? Uh, no. Dude, I, no wonder I, you're I, having such a hard time, man. You, you gotta, I put, you gotta I apply those. I just put everything... Yeah, I just put you all my stats buy that fucking and battle and see where it goes. You gotta buy the battle pass and start leveling up your car. Yeah. That's the only way you'll get good um, at Rocket League. I just true. put all my points into boost collection, so I just drive over the boost. Every <laughs> boost. <laughs> Starve <laughs> everyone. Well, since we're, since we're in the midst of a segue, shall we transition? Uh, almost. Or? Almost. Yes. Almost. I have one thing to say. Damn it, Tom. About, you blew it. Yeah, I, know, Tom, I, you blew I know. It twice. I know. And it's not gonna happen. Twice, it's Tom. not gonna happen. Twice, Tom. <laughs> all right. So, I actually... <laughs> oh, God. And then he dies for it. <laughs> and then I die. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mind. anyway, um, moving on. <laughs> okay, so Sinner, Sacrifice for Redemption. Uh, they're actually selling this in a really fucking weird way, uh, which we did want to talk about. Uh, it's oh. going to not be on Steam initially. It's got a Steam page, but it won't be sold through there for, for a bit after it comes out. Um, they're going to be selling through uh, through Discord. And not only that, they said, hey, could you... Don't don't stream our game on Twitch if you can help it. Stream it on caffeine.tv, which is a Twitch competitor that is floundering and nobody cares about. Have you ever heard of caffeine.tv? No? Exactly. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Selling on Discord. I kind of like hearing that. I, I really do. Fucking Discord? I kind of do. I, because the developer is going to get more money for put it, it on itch.io itch let's itch will take a cut that you set it's a goddamn slider you can say itch gets nothing why are you okay with itch but not discord because itch gives you a slider and i don't buy games through discord you just, because just it doesn't exist until it. now i think it's <laughs> dumb you hate anything that's not what you like no yes it's true. yes it's i do fact. i do i hate everything i don't like i admit that but the thing That's is, not it's, it's, not thing. About, it's not about that. It's more about. I, if actually, yeah, indie, that kind of is a bad thing, right? If you're just saying you dev, actively hate what you don't like, that you not, don't like. Yeah. It's not yeah. about like, like you Hitler like or hate dislike the guy. Or you think it's I don't like him, so I hate him. That, that, that's a good example <laughs> of it, though. So, um, yeah. I, if you're an indie dev, Right. And you're trying to make money. You're theoretically, you're struggling with finances. You've put your heart and soul into developing whatever you're developing. Don't you want to sell it in as many places as goddamn possible? If you're picking a winner, if you're picking a storefront because, hey, this is not the incumbent. It's not it's not the thing that everyone picks. I'm I'm an indie because I'm fighting the establishment. No, you're starving to death because you're fighting the establishment. Put it goddamn everywhere. Throw it on the shelves of Walmart. Like put it in fucking lemonade stands on the side of the street just make money that's See, the problem yeah. i have that is so contradictory to everything else in your life where you are fight the fucking system and once someone's doing that no it's hard for me so fuck it stop fighting it no no like if if they want to make right. money go where the people are but they don't right. care if, we were, if we you're were, the one bitch and not them. if we were what selling a, a game then absolutely i'd pay the hundred bucks to get on steam and i throw it on itch and discord no, no, and no. origin and fucking Bethesda no, I, I guarantee store. it's not the hundred dollars that's the issue it's a percent cut that's the issue oh i, I, yeah. I don't doubt it at all but like i put it everywhere where people are right make it easy to acquire the content I don't know. There's yeah, a reason I, I pirated Mass Effect three back in the day, right? Because there's a because reason it's just because you don't like. Yeah, I said it. It's because Tom it's, hates anything that's not Steam. Yeah, it's not. I buy, I buy shit on GOG. I okay, do. you got one because it's hipster oh, yeah. enough for you. Yeah. You buy stuff on GOG, which is the most hipster platform you possibly could have picked. No, no, no. second most. Itch, itch.io is the most hipster platform because it's made for what's, if hipsters. What's your what's your what's your favorite platform? Uh, GOG. Second, yeah. second most hipster platform. So this is first. how I check. This is how I check whether or not I'm becoming a video game hipster. I asked Tom whether or not he likes it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Like Tom, would you play this game? Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, I'm avoiding that. <laughs> I don't it's know. like, hey Tom, I hey Tom, is it by Devolver Digital? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen any gameplay of it? Yeah, uh, no, not yet. Do you love the game? It's literally the best game that's ever been made. Hey, hey, I watched, I watched <laughs> yes. an hour of actual people playing at PAX before I bought the messenger. Okay, yeah, Just but I don't think you, wa I don't think you watched, I don't think you watched an hour and a half on bated breath, whether knowing whether or not you were going to buy it. You would have bought it if you didn't sit through the hour and a half. Probably. He it looked like an NES game. He was about to buy. Okay, it was published by Devolver, and it looks like an NES game. My money's gone. Like they can literally realize, put out dog shit. Like, all right, let's let's recap. Tom <laughs> went to every single 
indie like indie hipster booth that he could find and he skipped over spider-man yes i did <laughs> yeah i didn't want to wait 90 minutes i skipped over smash brothers too we he can went, throw that out there he went to the very top to where only the lowest of low indie devs yes, were exactly Just so he could get he face time one, with the devs he went to yes. the one he, oh, yeah, he i did went to the i one specifically where everyone did that smells a little weird I, I actually I went to PAX specifically to avoid, and I even said this going in, to specifically to avoid all the big things because I don't I, like <laughs> Spider Man. Cool, whatever. Like Smash Brothers, yeah, I know I'm gonna get it in December. Whatever. Mario Party, don't really give a shit. Artifact, sure, that's coming out and it's gonna be free anyway. Like, w- what the fuck ever? Everyone else is gonna be covering this shit. I wanna under, I wanna see the games that nobody's gonna talk about. Nobody talks about Sinner. Nobody talks about fucking like shitty Rainbow Road. He wants to see the games that he's gonna forget about himself in three months. Exactly. Yeah. That's why. And you know what packs. he's going to be talking about in three months? Mario Party Smash is the greatest Brothers. game I've ever played yeah, in my yeah, life. Yeah, you Smash could do Brothers. two Switches. It's amazing. Two yeah. Switches. Holy shit, have you guys time. seen Spider Man? This thing is awesome. <laughs> I'm sure Spider Man's going to be great. Naughty Dog's a, a great company. They build great shit. Like, it's not Naughty I, Dog. What? Uh, Spider Man's not Naughty Dog. No, I always get the fucking two confused. Who's fucking making Spider Man? Naughty Dog and Insomnia? Insomnia. Yeah, I Insomnia always get those two mixed up. Out. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, because, because they, they existed in the Sony world, right? And I always lumped those two together because I was a Nintendo kid. I'm sorry, I'm loving this. <laughs> this entire segment right here has shifted from let's talk about packs to let's pick Tom apart. Yeah. And I am fucking loving <laughs> nah, that. It's, it's cool. It's cool. No, I literally, for a change. I, I literally did go to the sixth floor of packs just to see the indie people that no one else would talk to. <laughs> that said, the sixth floor is also where they had the $500 dice. Coincidence? I'm a big fan of you and who you are. <laughs> so the As the person, is, Tom you're, you're very much a stereotype of yourself, and I love it. <laughs> I really am. I fully embrace this. So, uh, Sinner, I, I might buy you on Steam. <laughs> All right. Fuck off. Yeah, speaking of, uh, you said uh, caffeine is floundering. I decided to check that website out just out of curiosity. Yeah. Uh, you can't even look at the website without making an account. Yeah, Maybe exactly. Maybe a reason why it's floundering. <laughs> Yeah, Microsoft yeah, about has about the only other streaming platform I think is Mixer's kind of cool. The damn Mixer's kind of cool. They allow for the quad stream. Yeah, like I can stream and you can stream Souls to the same stream without oh, going through a lot rad. of heads up, a lot of bullshit. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's Mixer's it's like really easy to do on the three sixty or three sixty, which won't Xbox fail. One. But no, I do think Mixer is a solid platform, they are. and it's only behind Twitch because it happened after. Exactly. I it's, fully agree. It's the only reason why. Yeah. Now, uh, okay, so did you guys see, we didn't even have it in the, in the show role, during the international, um, they kind of leaked Steam.tv, which is happening. Yes. Uh, Valve is building their own streaming platform. I I didn't bother with Steam Broadcasting. I mean, I, I tried it, but I didn't really do anything with it beforehand. They've been doing this, though, for a while. They've been working up to it. I don't know if yeah. you've ever seen, like, whenever you go to a page and stuff, sometimes they'll show someone streaming on it. Like, yeah. I've watched Evolver Digital stream. I've watched mm-hmm. um, some of the other indie dev stream. Usually, I love their streams. They're actually really good. Um, so there's actually, there's one place or one situation where I will pick a Steam stream over a Twitch stream. With Twitch, people try, and with Steam, people don't. Uh, so if I want to see, like, unabated gameplay here's a person that's they're they're not getting subs they're not getting donations they don't give a shit because most of the time they don't even know they're streaming they just click the allow anyone (laughs) and then they just set it wide open (laughs) Uh, which by the way is a great way to hear really shitty conversations um and so bad (laughs) yeah like it's it's fucking weird man they really need to tighten up the privacy on that but regardless if i want to just see the gameplay without someone trying to sell themselves on twitch i'll go to a steam stream because it's just gonna be some fucker playing a game like in twitch i've got I've got banners. I've got people looking for subs. I've got them interacting. I don't want it. I don't want human contact. I just want to see a video game. Um, so yeah, there you go. The fucking worst. Yes, I am. (laughs) None of that made any sense. And I think most of our viewers are now dumber. Yeah, perhaps listen to it. No, no, but no, no like it on, makes sense. on a Twitch stream, you have people like interacting with your audience. They're they're a streamer, right? On Steam okay, okay. streaming, they're not intentionally streaming most of the time because they just set the thing up I and forget like it exists. Have you, na- have you navigated Twitch recently? Like ninety like percent of Twitch is literally that. 
No, oh, like, really? So the, you, the thing no, nobody's saying is scroll down. Don't be at the top uh, of the list. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. That's, a, that's a good yeah. point. I mean, if you point. scroll down, there's a lot of people that are just like, I hit go on my PlayStation, and they're just sitting there like, how's it going, everybody? And it's just a family, and they must have accidentally <laughs> had the shit. You, you run into like a bunch of six-year-olds streaming on Twitch in the Fortnite if you scroll all the way to the bottom. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, it's so yeah. funny. That would be if creepy. You, if you spend it's, enough like weird time like on Twitch, like if you go to IRL, like there's always some like random person just staring oh at their monitor God. with one viewer, and then it's just like, <laughs> like there's always that. Like you go in and you're just like, what's going on? Someone like will lose their mind. They'll be like, oh holy shit! <laughs> like there was one guy building Legos, and he was just sitting there building Legos, and I popped on at like what was it like midnight or something <laughs> like that, uh, like or two, three, three o'clock in the morning. And he's just like building Legos in another country. I'm like, oh, sick Lego build, dude. And he just lost his mind and started showing me all of his Legos. <laughs> it was amazing. It was literally going to that guy's house. The internet's so a weird like, fucking place. So you're right. I need to just scroll down on Twitch and find like below the fold. I think that I think that you do have I think I think there's an element of something that you should probably do. And that's just, you know, look around a little more and don't take everything at surface value as far as that's concerned because I think you look work. at GOG and you look at GOG and surface value is the bottom of the barrel for Steam. There's stuff like the things on GOG and itch.io on Steam, but you just have to scroll down. There's just other better stuff above it. But that takes work. Tom doesn't want to it put in the work. Effort. It does take effort. I just I just want in I just want instant shitty stuff right away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anything to get between me and hating myself. So let me go to itch.io. Yeah, so that's why I play Overwatch. <laughs> that's, that seems fair. Oh, shit. Sorry, that took Tom. a fucking turn. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. I'm, I'm happy here. So, uh, Cyberpunk. Everyone excited? You, yes, I'm fucking pumped for Cyberpunk, so and I'll I'm going to buy you. this game. I'll save you, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, thank thank you. I appreciate it. So did you did did did, did 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 you guys actually watch the full like forty eight minutes? No, no, no. I was at work. I watched like forty five <clears throat> minutes. Wait, you watched it at work? <laughs> yeah, oh, of shit. course. I wouldn't do that. Oh yeah, well, well so okay. Yeah, like my I watched, a little I watched different. Twitch at work, which is which is cool. But the cyberpunk thing on YouTube had like nudity, uh, nudity. like it had boobs yeah, in I it. I don't know yeah, how they made it on YouTube. Like I honestly awesome. don't know. <laughs> But no, I, mean, I watched. Yeah, I regardless, watched, uh, the game looks fucking great. Game looks good. I don't think it looks revolutionary, though. No, I think a lot of people are still putting it out there to be like the next game. Game, you know what I mean? It's it's, like, yeah. it's big ass like, Deus Ex, which is literally yeah. all I want in and life right now. Exactly, I, it looks I, great. I think that's part of the reason they put out such a big preview because I I I genuinely think that maybe. With this one, we might actually just get what we're what we're shown, right? Like it didn't, it wasn't yeah. super fluffy. The car mechanics look kind of eh, and yeah. some of the shooting looked that really just weird. And so, like, it was just kind of like, all right, cool. So it's just a thing. It's a game. It looks reasonable, and I think it, if anything, it lowered my expectations and it made me think like, oh, you know what? This game is actually feasible. This is actually a reasonable game that could be done. Before they're saying like people were speculating rumors like it's gonna be a you know, scale utopia of the whole planet, and you're gonna fly through space <laughs> on intergalactic bacon made of two strings. No, that's like, beyond good and evil too. That doesn't come yeah. out for a while still. Yeah, that, that, that game I literally so the never only will, thing <laughs> I wanted from Cyberpunk 2077 is I want the Witcher three levels of RPG and writing in the future, and it looks like that's what I'm gonna get. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think and that's with, a safe with the call. mechanics of Deus Ex, which I mean, I fucking love Deus Ex. All the new Deus Ex games from Square Enix, top notch. Yeah, I think it's going to be a fairly be generic notch. shooter as far as the shooting and stuff like that's concerned, which is good. I just think that I think that thinking of it in a, any other sense, I think anything like in any other sense would be overly ambitious because I think like, I don't know, I feel like the shooter concept and how shooters are done is fine. <laughs> like you could pretty much copy paste it out of any engine and it'll be. So yeah. I'm not expecting much. I hope they spend a lot of time on the writing. If they do, do it's going to be a lot of fun. When do you think the game will come out? Do you think it's come out next year or the year after? 2077. It, it fucking says it's the title, man. <laughs> God, come God, on. Tom. That's the title. It's not its no, release date. that's the release date. It comes out in 2077. Well, no, no, no. This is case, a game is super let down. End of next year. <laughs> not looking for being uh, 30 years. He's right. In the future. <laughs> 
they're going to keep releasing it. Keep in mind that like we've been waiting for Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man, Last of Us. Uh, what was the other one? God of War for four or five years. So we'll we'll mm. see what happens. With Cyberpunk. Wasn't, I thought Spider-Man was only showed off last year. No, it was. Sh- no. It's been showed off for a while. It's been sitting there. For the last four, four or five E threes, we've been waiting on all four of those games. Yeah, Last of Us. Yeah, yeah, Last of Us. And, but Spider Man's been in every E three also. Like this is Spider Man. Like oh cool, a new Spider Man. Then the next year, oh cool, a new Spider Man. But no yeah. one really gives a shit about Spider Man. I like, don't know, man. Spider Man video games are always fucking Spider Man two on the game. I'm not saying they're great. not. I'm not saying they're not fun, and I'm not saying they're not good. I'm just saying that you don't really give a shit about Spider Man games. Like you'll play them. You'll enjoy them and you'll be like, that was a good ride. Like, but so, it's more of a game where you're like, yo, dude, remember Spider Man? Like, yeah, it was good, huh? Yeah, I remember that game. I should play that game again. So you're saying it's no Spyro trilogy, is what you're saying. Yeah. Which was uh, also present at PAX. Um, and it looks great. Got delayed, looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's delayed until November. Yeah. I can see that. I don't, yeah, I, again, like similar. They might as well make a Crocker remake too while they're at no. it. No. What? No. You don't want a croc remake? What's Fuck up? Croc. I hated croc. <laughs> what do you mean? It's a croc of shit, is what it is. Oh. What, if, what about croc was bad? I don't understand. I, I just didn't. I thought it was weak compared to Crash and Spyro. It's like the, oh, hey, you could also play croc. It's like, hey, you could play Sonic or Mario or Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Um, Yeah, thanks. I know who I'm picking. <laughs> Bubsy 3D. Boom! But. For real, though. Anyway. Shovel Knight 2. 2? Yeah. Uh, uh, there are two expansions coming out for Shovel Knight oh, I, next I, spring. Ah. Yeah, it's not Shovel Knight 2. I'd be losing my it's Shovel Knight. Expansions. Comment, expansions. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. Spring. Yeah. So, yeah, Shovel Knight. I like Makes Shovel Knight. <laughs> I've never really played much of it. Uh, so we probably should skip the next story to hit the other one about this. Uh, Bethesda fucking screaming at Sony saying, hey, look... Uh, Unless there's uh, there's good crossplay here, we are not going to throw the Elder Scrolls Legends on the pl- the PS4. Unless everyone can fucking play together, you can go fuck yourself. I love that. I love yeah. that move. It's yeah. a fucking power play by a huge publisher. Yeah, it's great. But it's, that's, it's yeah. better for everyone. Everyone benefits from them doing this. Yes, yes, they do. There is literally no downside to crossplay on the PS4. Uh, so Sony does the rational thing, and uh, they said, uh, "We think Sony, the limited cross-platform play we have today provides the best user experience because the PlayStation is the best place to play." Bloody blah. We want to fucking put walls against around our shit. Yeah. So uh, Sony actively fighting against crossplay. Bethesda says, "Go fuck yourself. We're not launching our games on you if you don't have crossplay." Uh, yeah, this will this will be good. Uh, I hope this changes something. It would yeah. be cool if something happened at all. Like that'd be nice. It doesn't seem like it will. Just because um, Sony is being yeah. awful, literally the worst um, right now. So, well, I mean, technically, I think Nintendo's is just because it doesn't work half the time. <laughs> yeah. But hey, hey, you can't trying, have crossplay okay? issues if online never works. <laughs> exactly. Um, Fallout 76 strategy. will be <clears throat> avoiding Steam so Bethesda can form direct relationships with their player base. That's also key for direct relationship to their wallet. Yeah, so Bethesda wants to make a store so they can avoid steam's cut which seems to be going yeah, around let's not let's gloss over blizzard yeah. and all the other ones that do the exact same thing real quick yeah because it's so. a smart thing to do if you have the talent <laughs> fucking do it so so here's, yeah, here's my sense why not here's my issue with this and it's not big versus little it's literally i don't want a hundred goddamn stores running on my pc at the same time so now i've got steam and cog and itch and uh epics launcher uh and battle.net um, you have Microsoft them Office and Microsoft yeah. Word. You have them running? So the whole reason I keep them running is because when I want to play Overwatch, I don't want to sit there for a half an hour while the goddamn thing updates. Like, I, when I want it to play, I want it to play, but I still want the updates, but I don't want 100 stores running. It, That's not so it bad. It'll just run. I yeah, how know. fast is your internet, though? Because, like, with the thing internet, is, is, like... My internet's pretty fucking great, but that said, See, you know, when, I, when fucking Valve drops a 20-gig update for Dota, which they do occasionally, it, it hurts me. Um, but you're okay with keeping Steam up. Yeah, not the thing is... Like, is even it... then, if I could close Steam but still get the updates, I'd totally do it. Like, I want the resources, man. I don't, I don't care who it is. It's just... 
it hurts that this happens. Because let's be honest, I, those things running in the background hardly does shit. Sometimes. The thing, the thing sometimes. is, is like if you I've had encountered a, Steam this, taking up resources before that it absolutely shouldn't be. Like it is actually fucking locked a core. And granted, it's probably a bug, but still, you have more applications doing that more often, and it's more likely that something will go, you know, weird. I mean, it is what it is. It, even even if like with like let's say you have like ten games and one of them is on a different platform and the other one's on a different platform. Uh even if most of them are on Steam and you have an updater for Bethesda, it just doesn't matter enough. It just doesn't matter because you have an you have a Bethesda updater and that'll update your game until you uninstall it because you're only going to play it for so long. You know, yeah. it's just a different way of doing the exact same thing. And, and I mean, to be real, on on the PC platform, it's not really such a big deal. It's just kind of a minor annoyance. But on mobile devices, it's a huge fucking deal and actually a security risk. So uh, Fortnite did launch for Android. It is out on the majority of devices now. And how you get it is you go to Epic's website, install an installer for Fortnite because you can't just directly install it can't do that Boy, um, that's really and weird. then you have to yeah. turn off your security settings that protects your phone from installing random shit from the internet and then install Fortnite, and then hopefully maybe you turn your your you know don't allow unknown sources back off but you know people won't do that so now their phone is wide open to you know installing random shit that comes through pop-ups which by the way on android it tends to happen a lot especially if you're yeah, not running like, a browser with an ad blocker like a spider-man game that messages me every time I want. It, I don't play for too long. Can we stop with those needy ex-girlfriend games? <laughs> so please. Notifications like, need hey, to go away hey, unless you opt in. You, I agree. Where you been? Where you been? It's been a while. <laughs> we miss you. Your so, Spider Man needs you. Yeah, Your thanks. Spider That's when you break up with Spider Man because Spider Man's a needy bitch. Thanks, Pokemon Go. <laughs> Luckily, I can turn off those specific messages. I should start advertising <clears throat> more games that I like, as far as mobile games are concerned, because they're fucking rare as shit. Buy Pumped. Buy Pump BMX. Buy it. It's fucking amazing. There you go. So there's so my plug. Can I can I talk about Fortnite <laughs> on, on Android devices now? Because I feel like it's the antithesis of everything Fortnite stands for, right? You you pop in, you play a quick round, you throw it down, and you play something else, right? It's it's good, right? You you don't wait a long time. Doesn't load forever. Like it's it's yep, quick it's, in and out. It, it's Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, so on on the phone, uh, I launched Fortnite. And it took a couple minutes, like about three minutes to, to load in. Uh, and then the game pops up Windows, says, hey, you need an update. Run your Fortnite installer app. I said, okay, fine. So I hit okay. It closes. I open up the Fortnite installer app. It goes, okay, cool. I'm going to I'm gonna download the update now. Oh, wait. It gets like three minutes into that and it says, oh, shit, your installer needs an update. So now I'm downloading an update for the Fortnite installer in the Fortnite installer. So I download that and then update the installer. And then I've downloaded the update for Fortnite and then I install that and then I launch Fortnite and then it has to download additional shit from Epic servers, which takes about eight minutes and then it unpacks it over the next five minutes and then it installs it over the next two minutes and then the game loads for an additional three minutes to take me to the lobby where i can actually fucking play and all then all, tom it's got about, off the bus yeah it's about 15 to 20 minutes for me to launch in a one goddamn game of fortnite literally while my phone was sitting next to me updating fortnite i pulled out my switch and i played a game of fucking fortnite it shouldn't be this fucking hard yeah, it's pretty but, awful. But especially... because because they circumvented Google Play because they're not in the App Store, the thing can't get automatic updates. Uh, it doesn't run automatic updates, and uh, I have to go through this literally every time. A case, like once a week, I will up it, open Fortnite on my phone and then just yeah. close it again because it needs to do this fucking bullshit. Exactly. Like they have an update every. They have a weekly update on that game because it's in. It's like you that's know. That's why. I mean, that's why mobile games are different than. I mean, eventually they won't be. Eventually, mobile games will be, a, you know, a, like once they're the, com the little mobile computers that we have in our pockets get a little bit better. So they're so going gonna... to be better, but just mobile games in general are going to be a different experience. And I, I like that I'm, we're I'm looking gonna... at a future where where mobile video games are going to be more like the their uh, PC counterpart, but we're just not there yet, and that's evidence of that. I'm going to I'm going to throw in a little bit of shade here towards uh towards Epic. Um PUBG on my phone, I just launch it and I play a game. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's PUBG. PUBG. You have to hate that game cuz it's PUBG. That's true. I, I don't, I actually hipster. I love PUBG on the phone. I, I think it's a fun experience. I, I enjoy PUBG more than Fortnite. Outright. Yeah, you can 
It's like, totally, I, totally fair. Totally valid. Yeah. It's just, but, it's a nice direction they're heading. I, I'm, I'm glad that we're taking mobile games and we're making more of a, like, it, it's, we're getting closer to the point where we're like standardizing games in general mm-hmm, and we can yes. play games on all platforms. It's really great, but we're just not there yet with mobile games. We'll get there. We're really Eventually, close. Eventually, we'll stop pushing blocks around the screen to get them outside of a bigger block. Eventually. <laughs> I know. Eventually. <laughs> One of these days. Uh, so uh, the guy who did the voices for NBA Jam uh, is making a Dota 2 announcer pack, so that's kind of cool. Awesome. Also, um, I'm going to say this, I don't think it's on here. During the Internationals announced that Gabe Newell is going to be in a Dota 2 announcer pack. Nice. The creator of Steam. <laughs> oh, yeah, because uh, actually one of the lines he has in that pack is is pretty funny. Uh, it's, you have two kills, but less than, f- or you have more than two kills, but less than four kills. Because he won't say three. Yes. Uh, is, he, yeah. is that really in the pack? Yeah. Yes, he won't say triple kill. Yep. That's such a long phrase. <laughs> but it's That's funny awesome. because, you know, yeah. where's Portal yeah, 3? Yeah. Where's Dota 3? Where's Team Fortress 3? Where is Ricochet 2? Throwing it out. That can stay. That cannot be. (laughs) Nah, we're good. We're good. Uh, Oh, also, speaking of Valve, um, they showed off Artifact at PAX. I didn't wait in the hour and a half line, but uh, it looks interesting, and their economy actually looks kind of cool. Yeah, it is. That's the card game, right? Yes, that is the Dota 2 card game. Now, the The way that nobody asked for. Yes, Artifact is a Dota 2 card game, like Hearthstone is a World of Warcraft card game. game. Now, here's the difference between this and a lot of the other digital card games. Don't think of this as a digital card game. This is a legitimate card game. It's just on a computer. If you want new cards, you just buy $2 packs and you get new cards. There is no in-game currency whatsoever in Artifact. They said they didn't want to oh, complicate things. God. They they don't have daily quests. Like They said it's we don't want to make a goddamn lifestyle game. If you want cards, you buy cards. And then they let so, you put the individual cards on the marketplace for trading. Yeah. So it's actually nice. pretty fucking cool. It's a real trading card game on yeah. a computer is what it comes out to be. Like I'm, I'm actually kind of excited. I, I have no interest in Artifact whatsoever, but what they're doing with the economy in that game, it's kind of cool. It's really actually nice for players. If I wanted to sell my entire deck, I could do that. Yeah. It's kind of nice. I wonder if I could use Steam trading cards in my Artifact games. Get out of here. I want to do that. Get out of here. I need to do that now. Get out of here. Okay. So I know we're blitzing through news, but uh, did you guys want to cover any of the um, Rocket League updates? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, 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 we do. Because we kind of glossed over that really quickly. This is all um, you guys, and I'm going to ask questions. Okay, so the latest uh, Rocket League update, um, we're just going to kind of mash them together. But um, we're getting a new uh, rank up system, a new, what is it? What would you call it? Progression. Progression, Progression system. There you go. Yeah. There's a new progression system built into Rocket League, as well as a new, uh, uh, really, it's called a Rocket Pass, but it's really just a Fortnite Battle Pass. So they are dropping separately, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, but the first one was uh, was the progression system, and um, we also got clubs. So now we also we have a 72 PC club, which is pretty cool. Um, but in that update, that was the first update that came out. They broke physics. So what's Some interesting physics. about, uh, yeah, what's interesting about uh, Sonic's recent updates, and this is causing a big stir, is that they'll, they'll go and they'll play test it, but they don't have any high rank or high ability player test their game before release. Uh, so the big issues that they're, that they're starting to run into is that they'll think everything's okay to release, and then they'll release a mechanic that their testers can't do. And then that mechanic's gone. Right, like that mechanic will just be destroyed. For this instance, uh, stalls and dribbling were both completely destroyed in this patch, and flicks for all intents and purposes. So, those if you're not really a Rocket League player, but I'm pretty sure everyone is <laughs> in this in this Discord, this channel. Um, flicks is when you have the ball on top of your uh, on top of your car, and then you just do like a little front flip, and it flicks the ball up really big. They basically made it so that when you do that, it doesn't go anywhere. It just kind of like sticks to your car and falls off. Dribbling was totally broken in the same way. It's like kind of glued to your car and you can't, uh, you can't do anything with it because if you try to slow it down by going past it, it falls off the back. Or if you try to speed it up by letting it go forward, it just falls off the front. 
So it really kind of it broke the core physics of the game, and they they chalked it up to what like server tick rate or something along those lines, along those lines. But that's a actually more of a core physics change. So that's it, this is a big weird. shame. It's yeah. a huge change, and it's a big issue. But what's interesting is that lower rank players didn't like you know didn't notice a thing, and so you you get to the point where you're like oh, oh well you know what. You know what really matters in the game. Who should be testing it? Should they have get pros to test it? And you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of discussion that this brings up, and it actually applies to pretty much every game when you think about it. Hmm. No, they had... should definitely get pros to test it. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a couple of games that off the top of my head, Halo Five did that for their pro for their game. They brought in pros to test the patches before they went out. Uh, same with the uh, Smite old MMO game. Um, again, brought in pros into their office too to uh, test out patches, and eventually hired some of them to do game testing. What's also interesting is that uh, the progression system is real is uh, gives you like I guess the the old skill pack was or skill app was up to seventy five was the limit, and now they've uncapped that entirely, and you can just go to the moon. But it uh, what it did is it did the math and it said, okay, well everybody that has hit seventy five have been acquiring XP since then, they're going to, uh, you know, uh, go past 75. They'll be higher, right? The, the math will calculate it up a little bit. Um, but what they didn't tell anyone is that they actually set a cap at your, uh, at your max level that you could achieve to 120. So people with 5,000, 8,000 hours are getting 120, just like the people that have uh, 2,000 hours so yeah. there was a there's a big outrage as far as that's concerned. So they're gonna get, they're gonna roll back, and they said that that was a bug. They're going to uh, on the next patch there'll be a new calculation, so people should be closer to two hundred to twenty five things like that. Was it a bug yeah. though? I don't think was so. It? No, yeah. I don't think it. <laughs> no, because here's the thing: they said that yes, if you're at seventy five for the last three years you're going to get a lot more than someone who just turned 75. And what we found out, you just turned 75, you were at 114. I've been 75 right. for a year and a half, and I was 114. Yeah, the math is a little off as far as that's concerned, so we'll see where that goes. Um, the other thing that's coming out next will be Rocket Pass. So they, they, they put out a patch like the next day, and they fixed dribbling, they fixed stalls. So that was really reassuring. Their turnaround time on that... Uh, on that bug was absolutely insane and they and they're so i'm i'm pretty stoked on them for that but the next thing that's coming out is the rocket pass which is you have like a whole bunch a whole pile of uh new items that you that you just gain by playing which is a bit of a shame i think that was a missed opportunity i really would have liked to see actual weekly challenges instead of just uh you know just games but it's still something to work for and that's kind of nice that was something I really liked about Halo 5. Halo 5 gave you objectives of like, do this, do that. But yeah, like it would have been nice to say like, oh, do X amount of things that, you know, because it would also improve the community as a whole. I think that Fortnite was really good about it because what they did is they said, oh, go check out all these cool spots that we just made and do some of these cool things that we just in, like added yeah, and try to but, use a different weapon that you've never used before. The devil's for, uh, advocate oh is, God. though, that I whenever you that. get a Rocket League, it would be like, hey, hit an aerial shot. You'll have everyone hey, in ranks where they can't do it. get 45 turtle goals. Well, no, and like those, everyone will be <laughs> jumping for the same shot because they all want that. Yeah. Well, It'll change the, same the way time. people play. Fortnite had the same issue with that where when they put out a community goal, like everyone would do one thing. So if they <laughs> randomized yeah. it amongst their player base, I think it would be less of an issue. Well, it's still the idea. I mean, they don't even need to do that. I mean, the so, thing is, is they could just say like when they don't. Like don't even it. with Fortnite, it's been it's been it's been different. Like they've been changing it up. They say do a sniper, get a sniper kill. It's like two sniper kills. So you could easily just say the same thing with uh, Rocket League. You know, like get yes one no. aerial goal, get one turtle goal, and the same way can go. Oh, use a breakout, use an octane. The real the real nice thing about it is the fact that it it makes the community more varied. You're saying use a Batmobile for even though that's a paid one, it would be a bad example. But use the Batmobile for a game like oh great okay that was fun 
You know, there's oh, always stuff that you yeah, can do. Yeah, but if you end up with stuff like yeah. get three goals in a game, you're going to have people pressing more, trying Dota, to be a lot more stuff that they shouldn't actually be doing in the flow of a game because they want to hit that objective. Dota did this with, guess, uh, with a lot of their battle passes. Dota did this with their battle passes where they would say, hey, use these heroes, yeah, get these it. objectives, you know, deward this many times. And then you'd get supports running around not supporting anyone, not healing, not, you know, stacking camps. They would literally just be looking around for wards and buying items to look around for wards. Uh, granted, Dota's a bit more complex than Rocket League as far as, you know, random things to do and the game is longer. But it, it just, did just keep bring in mind down that the flow of the game. Just keep in mind that there's there's more people playing than just competitive people. Yeah. yeah. The same thing, especially with Rocket League. I think there's a lot more like our Discord entirely. Like once we actually put together the team and we looked at the actual stats and the skill level of all of the people in our team, we're all high champ to GC. The majority of the people are GC, especially me. So like the thing is, is you're we're our whole community is very skewed. As far as that stuff is concerned, we don't have very many casual Rocket League players. Despite how this podcast goes, the majority of the people here play Rocket League. The more, the majority of the people put active hours into Rocket League. Like Eric and Dobby spend a lot of time getting their Rocket League game going. Like if we're not playing the, the latest title that's just been out, we're playing Rocket League. If we get bored of a game that's out, we do a casual Rocket League game. So our, our community is not a good example of a community. So that, uh, that would just be playing Rocket League casually. So when you think about things like, oh, the game will shift, the game will change, it will change for the better for the casual player. Yeah, because you have yeah. to balance that. You have to balance the casual player with the uh with the per person trying like doing a try hard the clubs Noobs make your game because when you get hardcore into a game and get into the upper echelons of of skill set those players eventually do fall off they go to other games right they do other things they're not always going to play cs 1.6 for the rest of their lives but you know when you get an influx of lower level players and and you keep the you know the groups of people moving through the stages of your game and the stages of skill progression that keeps your game alive uh, and it's why games yeah. like like you know something like dota uh if you only have high skill players and you don't have any noobs your game eventually dies well this this topic can go in and I, I can definitely go into this as a whole but i'm really excited for the new update and i think that i think that it's all been the correct steps forward it's just been slow like you know you want everything right now but you can't have it and that's great whatever but they're doing it they're doing a fantastic job and that and I really respect them so far for what they've been doing. In two weeks, they are doing more for the game in my eyes than what they've done in the last two years. Like what oh, they're yeah. bringing to the table, like fuck the tournaments. Bringing in clubs, bringing in level progression that's topless is amazing. And then battle passes on top of that, it's just topless a fucking Topless level cherry. progression, you said. Topless. I mean, you can't Damn. take this level of progression to Nintendo. I don't know how they're getting it to the Switch. I don't know either. Because we're talking topless levels, baby. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, the new progression, by the ESRB. With the with the new progression system and the new uh <clears throat> what is the battle pass thing? Yeah. The way it works, once you get to the end where you can basically just get levels and get painted and special item drops, kind of makes me want to get there. Because finishing a couple of games and seeing a painted item drop is kind of like Fuck yes. It's almost yeah, it's almost like the it's almost like the What's the thing that everyone hates? The stu loot crates. It's almost like the loot crate, right? But like, not. It's like having the loot crate open for you, kind of. Yeah, kind of, yeah, exactly, exactly. Every time you know you're gonna get that roll, and you're like, ah, yes, this roll is coming. But this time, it seems like all the rolls are gonna be at least okay because they're always gonna be painted or special. So, in in order to to blow through the rest of the news, um. Because there's there's a bunch of stuff here. Uh, Gwent is going to have a single player campaign, but no it's not going to be part of Gwent. It's going to be a standalone game, so that's weird. It's a time out. I got to point out the irony. Gwent's a standalone <laughs> game that came out of Witcher. Who's getting a standalone game to come out of Gwent? I think they're just trolling us at this point. Okay, um, I just have to point out that Torchlight Frontiers. I'm super excited for, and it's going to be rad. Uh, it's going to come out. CS:GO gets a free offline play mode for people who just want to try it out. Um, 
There's a bug in Doom 2 uh, for one of their secret areas, and somebody figured out how to get it with a demon pushing them into a secret zone because you can't just walk into it. Uh, so that's that's cool. It's the first ever 100% run of that level in 24 years. Yeah. Without a bug. Insanity. Uh, there was a shooting at a Madden tournament where Bitch Boy McGee, and that's his official name as far as this broadcast goes, uh, Bitch Boy decided after he lost his Madden qualifier round to go in and shoot a bunch of people, injuring 10 and killing two others. And he shot himself because he's a little pussy. Um, one of the people, one of the victims is suing EA and the venue for not providing a uh, safe place or additional security. Uh, so yeah, fuck bitch boy McGee and his stupid life. Um, or, you know, what's left of it. Uh, Streets of Rage 4 has been announced and is actually coming out. So I'm personally really excited about it. I've bounced off beat em ups. I, know. I used to love them. I used to love them. I'm, I'm excited though. We'll see where it goes. I'm really, I'm more excited about the soundtrack than anything else. Uh, no ass creed in 2019. Uh, so if you're looking to creed some ass, uh, you're going to have to wait till 2020. Uh, the Luigi's next one leaked, but, right? Keep, the next one looks so good though. Keep yeah. in mind, that's what they did with uh, Origin. They took a year off, came out with Origin, and yeah. it, Origin oh, rocked it. Yeah, I, I don't think this is a bad thing at all. I think giving the team an extra year to get their thoughts together and build something cool is great. Uh, Luigi's Mansion from the GameCube is being remastered and thrown on the 3DS October 19th of this year. If you're going to remaster why not a game, the Switch? why not put it on a platform that's going out of style? I, know, I, just, I want fucking Luigi's Mansion on the Switch. I don't know why. I don't know. I do too. Yeah. They make I'm with you. stupid Bullshit. moves. Yeah. Shenmue 3, uh, August. August 27th. Uh, so, oh, fuck. I'm just now seeing... Oh, 2019. 2019. August 27th, 2019. 2019. One year. I'm uh, just now seeing this next one. Holy shit. Yeah. Saints Row the Third. Uh, that came out fucking how long ago? Uh, it's coming to the Switch. So oh I'll, play it. I'll play it again. It is the, it is it is the best Saints Row. Saints Row. It is. Uh, so yeah, I, I might pick that up. I'm a fucking sucker. I'll pick it up. Row. I'll play it. Give uh, me a reason to play the Switch. Diablo 3 for the Switch is coming in fall. I will be buying that. Uh, because Torchlight can't get here soon enough. I won't because that is not the platform I want Diablo. I I want to play it on the bus. That's the only reason. Uh, some fucker from IGN uh, fucking plagiarized literally everything in his entire career. IGN has since scrubbed him from the internet and fired him. Yeah, he um, was actually a community manager. He got big on uh, YouTube because he gave away free sw uh, uh, switches when they were rare. Yeah. And then he ended up, IGN brought him on because he did a lot of Nintendo coverage. And then after he got busted on this one because he took a YouTuber and read his YouTube verbatim in his yeah. shit, IGN then went back and started looking at everything he did. Almost everything he did for them was plagiarized. He even plagiarized was, another IGN bad. editor's review in his own review of the so same game. Bad. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, this is but how you get run out of an cool, industry. Right? Games journalists were up in arms. I have, I have a few arms. stories as, well, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, but that's for another time. This yeah. is ridiculous. Uh, so Time Splitters is coming back. Yes, um, I heard that. That's yeah, awesome. That was super a fun excited. Franchise. I hope franchise. they bring back the Love Letter, like in a super easy way and on PC and allow people to share shit. I'm excited. Please. I love Time Splitters. I'm okay with um, that. Doom Eternal is announced and will be coming out. And uh, from what I hear, literally, I, I heard it in, in the trailer. I think Mick Gordon is back doing the soundtrack. So I'm fucking oh, pumped. 100% Fucking Mick pumped. Again. Oh my God. Like... I love Doom 2016, the game, but that soundtrack is so goddamn it good. It is the only video game soundtrack to this date that I own. So yeah. good. Dude, you yeah. need to look into the Killer Instinct soundtrack. Because yeah, guess who did good. it? Nope. Yeah, Mick Gordon did that too. Yeah, dude, it's pretty fucking good. Yeah, but okay, when he picks up a, a six-string guitar, starts playing, he's like, you know what? That sounds pretty good. And then it's he not, it's not quite right. Like a Russian synth. And then he goes to a seven-string guitar, and he's like, you know, that's a lot more beefy. He's like, but it's still not right. Then he picks up a fucking eight-string guitar, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so fucking good. I can't wait. Um, so uh, the trailer for Doom Eternal looks great. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online will uh, launch the second half of September. Rumor has it that you will be able to pay by using a carrier pigeon to ship your credit card to Nintendo headquarters. And then the terms of service is actually written in stone. Yes. And they will ship that in horse and wagon to your house yes yeah uh the amish community is very happy with nintendo for offering them this job opportunity um, oh do they love playing their uh, turned off switches because you know they, they can't power them yeah uh germany is now allowing for nazis in video games video games have been classified as art the laws have been changed and yes wolfenstein will finally get proper fucking representation in germany because fuck nazis and let's kill hitler uh that's cool yeah, so yeah, that's pretty rad. And that's all the news we have. Yep, uh, wow, that was a speed run and a half of news. Well yeah. done.
we we ran long so uh get out there go go play some video games and we're gonna play some monster hunter this week well not not right now Thank no you. not right now not right and now. We it have is a long weekend so if you want to get into a game oh, yeah. you haven't done this yeah. is the time to do it jump in our discord uh i guess i guess you've got the the stuff yeah yeah oh yeah we'll yeah. We'll, we'll do the stuff the stuff so we'll everyone knows stuff. um we have a discord where you know we have a lot of different games a lot of different people playing right now we're pretty heavy in some monster hunter uh, obviously rocket league all the time <clears> but <throat> monster hunter is pretty heavy right now with us some people are trying to revive siege but Scroll on down on our Twitch page. You will see a link to our Discord. Click on it. Join us. Enjoy us. That sounded weird. Have yep. fun with it. <laughs> that sounds weird. Just fucking click the link. Just fuck us. Um, All the time. <laughs> we have a Twitter. We don't do shit with it. But we got it. So go check it out. It's at 72 PC Yeah, our last tweet's like from March. Enjoy that. If you that. tweet at us, we Love will see it. No, we won't. we won't see it. I, 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 I check it like once a month. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I follow um, us. We have a YouTube. Um, I've been a lazy ass one. I haven't edited shit, so it is out of date. But it's 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. Go yeah. check it out. But if you're over there, we're sorry you're seeing this like two years late. We still are very active on our Twitch page. Go to our Twitch at yeah, TV slash 72 <laughs> PC podcast. We stream a lot, or we still stream this cast once a month on the first Saturday. Our fantastic guest. Thank you for jumping in tonight. Dark Soul Invader. Plug yourself, sir. Yeah, not in a sexual way, just in a party mansion kind of way. I mean, do you guys want to move to Mixer? I can get us banned right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm Dark Soul Invader. Obviously, it's spelled right there underneath Eric and Tom and next to Josh above the podcast, of course. Uh, find me on twitch.tv forward slash Dark Soul Invader. Stream there quite often. Not as often because I started my classes again, but I try. Drop out. Uh, be a Twitch star. Woo. Oh man, <laughs> dude! I can. I'll find a cardboard box and set up in McDonald's. I'll try, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> all right. But with that, um, yeah. I think that's all we got for this month. Souls, once again, thank you for filling in, stepping up with us. No, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting. He's but just a, always a good he's time. Just a member of the cast at this point. Yeah. <laughs> he's a rotate. All right. But with yeah. that, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we have for you this month. So, and, and remember to not hate the things you don't like. Yes. Just because yeah. you don't like it doesn't mean you have to hate it. Don't be a Tom. Don't be a Tom. <laughs> Until next <laughs> month, ladies and gentlemen. Game on. See you, everyone. Bye, Bye -bye. guys.